Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's CISN Football Pregame Show Week 6 edition. We are already in Week 6 here in Central Iowa. We got a packed show ahead of us, as always. We got highlights from last week's games. We got top 10 rankings. We got coach interviews and much, much more. All that and more coming up here on the CISN Football Pregame Show, brought to you by Iowa Corn. Our first highlights of the week, Ankeny and Des Moines Roosevelt. J.J. Cole, pass short to Evan Erlmeyer. Erlmeyer, just a sophomore for Ankeny. He scores the early touchdown. He'll be one to watch the next couple seasons for the Hawks. Later in the first quarter, Jason Williams runs over a defender and bumps into the end zone. Touchdown, Ankeny, 14-0 lead early. And then Ankeny kept pouring it on. Here's a catch and run by Evan Erlmeyer. Gets a great block up field. Looks like he has a chance to break a couple more. Roosevelt's able to get around him and bring him down. Williams would score a couple plays later, give Ankeny a 21 to nothing lead. Later, Cole jukes back, makes a move, and JJ reaches for the goal line. The Iowa State recruit off to a hot start in this one. Ankeny on top, 28 to nothing. Nice move there at the end of it. 28 to nothing, 13 seconds to go in the second quarter. Dominic Wade throws a beautiful ball to Zion Spellman into the back of the end zone. Touchdown Des Moines Roosevelt just before the half. Great momentum booster for the Rough Riders. Then later in the third quarter, how about this play? Peter Fandedet, great move, jumps to the outside, 28 to 13. Roosevelt or 28-12 Roosevelt trying to sneak back into this ball game they get a stop Ankeny would punt it back away all momentum's on Roosevelt's side and Peter Fandedet touches the ball and Ankeny hops back on top of it killing the momentum for the Rough Riders huge mistake Jacob Kruger and company were the one that hopped back on top of it then later Jason Williams gets the carry runs it up the middle and scores. Roosevelt would score one more time, but could not quite put together a comeback. Ankeny hangs on and defeats Roosevelt 35 to 18. Ankeny Centennial and Sioux City East. The Black Knights undefeated coming into this ball game. It's a game of the year candidate, that's for sure. Cole Ritchie, touchdown pass to Kellen Jacobson into the end zone. The big tight end gets the big play. Then later, a high kick here still early in the first. That one's fumbled. Sioux City East hops on top of it. They'd score two plays later. It's 13-0 early. Trenton Smith to his top man, Elijah Porter. Makes a couple guys miss, and Porter uses his speed to score. Make it 13-7 against Sioux City East. Then later in the second quarter, 13-7, Elijah Porter again gets it to the outside. Busts through a tackler and scores. Ankeny Centennial would take the lead, 14-13. Midway through the third, Richie, another screen play. Back to the other side to Brecken Shawshaw. And Shawshaw goes all the way and scores. Make it a Sioux City East 21-14 lead. Later, Drenton Smith checks down to Max Snyder. Snyder breaks the tackle, dives for the goal line, and scores it. We're not at F at 21 apiece. A wild game at Ankeny Stadium in the rain. A little bit later, early in the fourth quarter, Richie back to throw. Checks back down to his tight end, Shoshaw. And Shoshaw makes a couple guys move. And Shoshaw's putting on a show. Touchdown, Sioux City East, 21 to 28. Black Raiders on top. How about this play? Possibly play of the year. Trenton Smith breaks a tackle, lobs one downfield. The chase shuddy and makes a heck of a grab before he's tackled down at the 45-yard line. And then the very next play, Elijah Porter 
handoff. Great blocking by the Chase Shuddy upfield, and Elijah Porter scores. They're tied at 28 apiece. Centennial would get the ball back and take it all the way down to the final minute. Inside the five-yard line, Kale Wiener with one minute to go, kicks it through the uprights. Centennial takes a 31-28 lead. Then on the ensuing drive, Sioux City East, Cole Ritchie throws down, broken up. Connor Welsh makes the play. Sioux City East drops to their first loss of the season. Centennial moves to 3-2. and two. West Des Moines Valley taking on Marshalltown. Midway through the first quarter, Michael Provenza checks down short to Bryce Anderson. Number 88 scoots into the end zone, gives Valley a quick 7-0 lead over Marshalltown. Then a little bit later, midway through the second, a heck of a play. This will be one that will go on our top five at the end of the year, possibly. This kick is blocked and scooped up by Isaiah Pinks. Gage Olson was the one that blocked it. Pinks gets a lucky bounce on it and scores it. A blocked field goal turned into a touchdown. Gives Valley the 14-0 lead. Early in the third quarter, Valley on top, 14-0. Darius Mason, the big running back, moving his way to the left side of the field. Not enough speed to get in the end zone, but he gets down to the five-yard line. He would score the very next play to give Valley a 21-0 lead. Mason up the middle, too hard to tackle. 21-0, Valley on top with Marshalltown. Marshalltown trying to get stuff going, just couldn't quite get it. How about this play? Dalen Houston, first down pass to Corey Smith, but he gets leveled by Surreal Fountain. How about that hit back over the middle? Heck of a play by Fountain and his defense, keeping Marshalltown on their toes. Marshalltown with another chance, 21-0, 4-20 remaining here in the third quarter. This is a run up the middle, nice bouncing by Tate Reang, and it's a touchdown for the Bobcats. 21-7, but that's about as close as they would get as Michael Provenza with a 28-7 lead, 9.47 to go on the fourth. Provenza, a QB draw, runs it up the middle, great blocking, untouched. Touchdown, Valley, they would go on to win. 35-14 is your final score, Valley moves to 3-2 on the season. And those were our highlights from our three games this past week on the Central Iowa Sports Network. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back for your top ten rankings, coach interviews, and much more. You're watching the CISN Football Pregame Show, brought to you by Iowa Corn. We all love a good win, however small or ordinary. Losing track of time, finding yourself with a few extra dollars in your pocket, soaking up the perfect Iowa day. These are the everyday delights and small victories that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the moments that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the corn they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Free Godfather's Pizza. Begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and it's going to be an interesting patio furniture season this year. We have ordered a ton of merchandise, but due to supply chain issues, it's coming in a truckload at a time all summer long. If you want the best patio furniture, check early and check often. If you want to custom order your furniture, get in here as soon as you can to give your furniture the best chance to arrive this summer. Fireplace Superstore, Iowa's best patio furniture selection, just east of I-35 on Douglas Avenue. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. I'm off to college. Rats. Hi, Joe the car guy with a reminder. Before you send your kids off to school, set up an appointment with Westside Auto. We check everything from tires to belts, fluids, hoses, wipers, and lights. 44 inspection points to help prevent that oh rats moment for your students. Call us today to set up your appointment. We'll have your kids off to school saying, For the best, head west. Westside West Auto. Auto. 
Not all used vehicles are created equal. DRMAN certified used vehicles have a big advantage. What sets us apart is that all used vehicles receive a 175 point inspection. Carfax report, two oil changes, collision deductible coverage, and wheel. Welcome back to the CISN Football Pregame Show brought to you by Iowa Corn. I am Blake Walker. We got coach interviews up next for our three games this weekend. We're going to send you to those interviews right now. Joining us now is Johnson head coach uh, Brian Woodley. And Well, coach, uh, let's talk about this so far. Uh, you know, a couple losses sprinkled in with some wins there. Uh, where do you think you're at as far as the progress uh, of your team at this point in the season? Well, um, uh... Be honest with you, we're not where we want to be. Obviously, we had a couple tough losses, um, you know, sprinkled in with some wins. We just haven't been real consistent um, each game. Well, we've yet to put together a complete 48 minutes. We've looked good at times. And then we kind of, like last week, kind of went in the tank for about three quarters. But we found a way to win. And at the end of the day, the most important thing is finding a way to win. And uh, that was a positive for us. We had a battle and scrape and claw for the entire game against Waukee. And both teams really wanted to win. And uh, we made just a few more plays than they did. And uh, we got that W last week. So what do you, is it offense, defense, or a little both that you're you're seeing those issues with? Well, I mean, you know, defense has been pretty solid all year, uh, minus a few plays here and there. Offensively, it's a lot harder. Uh, Timing-wise, we've had some injuries. Some guys in and out of the lineup, our offensive line, guys in and out of the lineup. So the consistency up front hasn't been there. We haven't been able to run the ball consistently. Uh, we've been struggling. Um, I think our pass protection, for the most part, has been pretty good. But, uh, you know, it's when you're juggling guys in and out and trying different things. We just haven't hit on all cylinders yet. I think the keep, we're capable of really doing some good things. I mean, we got some good players, uh, but we got to hit 11 for 11. And we talk and stress about everybody on the field doing their job. And uh, if we have 10 out of 11 guys doing the right thing, you tend not to do very well. So once we can figure that out and quit shooting ourselves in the foot with some penalties uh, and putting us in some long down and distances and behind the sticks kind of things, I think you'll see us be a little bit more consistent. Well, if there's ever a week where you want to see that happen, that's uh, this week against Dowling, isn't it? Oh, God, yes. Really good. Really good team. I, I thought from day one, going into the season, they were going to be, it's hard for me to say this, sleeper, because everybody talks about Southeast Polk, Ankeny, you know, those names have been mentioned along with a few others, and no one was really talking about Dowling, and knowing what they had coming back, the great quarterback, and some offensive weapons, and then their defense, I know, always comes around and plays well. They're they're playing as good as anybody in the state of Iowa. Well, and you know, too, this is a time of the season that if your team puts everything together and you start getting hot and getting on a roll, uh, that could be a big deal and, and push you all the way into the playoffs, can't it? Yes. I mean, we're in week six. Um, we're three and two, and we're hoping to get some pieces back. But you're right. If we can get some momentum – and uh, if we can find a way to get a W here uh, against a good Dallin Catholic team, I think that really propels us into our last third of the season. All right, Coach. Well, uh, we really appreciate you taking out a little time to talk with us about this game. And good luck on Friday night. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right, we're here with uh, Coach Tom Wilson of Dowling Catholic. Coach, first of all, thanks for joining us. Let's talk about last week's win over uh, Council Bluffs Lincoln. That's two straight shutouts your defense has pitched. Talk about the defense and talk about the offense. Talk about the team as in general the last two weeks. You know, really, I, I think our defense, as you mentioned, has come along. Um, you know, when we played Southeast Polk early in the season, um, you know, I don't think there's any question they were better than us that night. And, and part of it was – you know, defensively, we didn't do a good enough job of, of stopping the run. And um, obviously they were able to be efficient in their passing game. And a little bit of it is experience. Um, you know, I think our kids have gotten better as 
as we've gone along. You know, part of it could be competition, although, you know, City High is a pretty formidable team uh, that we were able to get a shutout a couple of weeks ago. And I'm just really happy with how they've uh, gone about their business and continued to improve. And, you know, really as, as a team, you know, offensively, um, we have uh, been able to stay fairly balanced. Obviously, we've got you know, Jackson in the passing game, but between C.J. Phillip and Rashad Davis and Jack Moore, um, we've been able to get uh, a running game going, which eases some of the pressure off that passing game. And I think some of our improvement also is in, in special teams. I think we've gotten better and, and won the field position battle. Has there been anything that surprised you as we reached the halfway point of the season that you didn't think was going to be something that you guys would have at the beginning of the season that you have now? Well, I, I think the development of the running game has been incredibly important. Um, you know, we, we adjusted schemes defensively a little bit and we knew it was going to take us some time, but um, I think that started to shape up and, you know, maybe in the manner of, of how that shaped up is a little bit surprising, but uh, our, our kids have done a good job. Let's talk about the opponent this week, Johnston. Some say they're the most inconsistent team we have seen in the state of Iowa. What have you guys gone about? What kind of film have you guys looked at? You know, just kind of based on who Johnston's played so far and what are you looking forward to the most here on Friday night? Well, I think first off, Johnston always, you know, plays us pretty well. And, and uh, you know, we've got great respect for, you know, their program. And, um, you know, I think if you look at their team, they've played great defense. And I, I do think they have a really good defense. They play hard. Uh, they're very sound, good tacklers. Safeties are, are very involved in the, in the run game. Um, and so I think offensively, we're going to have to do a great job. And, you know, really with their offense, I think they continue to look for an identity. Um, they've, they've played a couple of different quarterbacks, uh, haven't run the ball particularly well, statistically, um, throwing the ball probably more than what they want to. But I, I think Nuss is a good quarterback, and they certainly have uh, some weapons on the outside, Simpson probably being the biggest one and Rex Woodley being another. So we're already halfway. What is the biggest thing you guys want to improve on here the next couple of weeks as we head toward the postseason? Well, I think we have to continue to improve in our preparation. Um, if we're going to get better day in and day out and week in and week out, you have to be able to prepare. And uh, that takes a mature football team to be able to do that. And, you know, I think we've made strides in that regard. And uh, I still think we have a ways to go. But um, you know, the, the idea is I know it's a nine game schedule, but we want to be at our best at the end. And if you if you're going to do that, you have to have the mentality that we have to get better each and every day. Well, coach, we appreciate your time. We wish you the best of luck on Friday here against Johnson. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Once again, we want to take a chance to thank all of the coaches that had a chance to sit down with us this week. We wish them all the best of luck tonight in their Friday night football endeavors. We're going to take a break and we will be back to wrap up with our top 10 rankings and our games to watch. You are watching the CISN football pregame show brought to you by Iowa Corn. We all love a good win, however small or ordinary, losing track of time, finding yourself with a few extra dollars in your pocket, soaking up the perfect Iowa day. These are the everyday delights and small victories that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the moments that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the corn they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Not all used vehicles are created equal. DeArmond certified used vehicles have a big advantage. What sets us apart is that all used vehicles receive a 175 point inspection. Carfax report, two oil changes, collision deductible coverage, and wheel dent and windshield repair. Also, all DeArmond certified come with two warranties. A one year 12,000 mile bumper to bumper and a two year 100,000 mile powertrain. DeArmond Ford Indianola, DeArmond Automotive Knoxville, DeArmondAuto.com. Do you know what the best part about being a dog is? You can hear disaster before it even happens. You know what they say about disaster. Sometimes it can inspire a symphony. An honest day's work deserves an honest day's treat. No extra charge. And that is why we choose honest wrenches. No extra charge. And it's how service should be. 
We are. We are. We are so much more than an energy company. We are connectors, community protectors, and clean energy leaders. We are job creators, friends and neighbors, stewards of your dollars and savings. Yes, we. We. We are so much more. We are the energy behind your everyday. And we are obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Welcome back to the CISN Football Pregame Show, brought to you by Iowa Corn. I am your host, Blake Walker. Let's jump right into the top 10 rankings that were released just this week by the Des Moines Register. Coming in at number one, Pleasant Valley. The Spartans remain number one out there on the eastern side of Iowa. I don't see that changing, but they do have a tough contest in two weeks against Iowa City High we'll be keeping an eye on. Dowling Catholic, number two, continues to cruise. They've pitched two straight shutouts over Lincoln, Cedar Rapids, or excuse me, Council Bluffs Lincoln and Iowa City High. Ankeny, number three, taking care of business as usual against Des Moines Roosevelt. Southeast Polk, their schedule gets a little tricky. They get Linmar this week and then Prairie down the road. Cedar Rapids Kennedy stays at number five, pretty much the same throughout the number five position. Urbandale sitting in number six, a sneaky good team. Cedar Rapids Prairie, number seven, they get a tough test against Southeast Polk in a couple weeks. Ankeny Centennial, number eight, after that win against Sioux City East, they jump into the top ten. Sioux City East falls behind the Jaguars at number nine. And how about Davenport West? Five and oh for the first time since 1987. They are looking good, but their schedule becomes very tough. We'll see if the Falcons can hang on to it in the next couple of weeks. Those are your top 10 in the Class 5A rankings, courtesy of our friends at the Des Moines Register. Now it's time to take a look at the top six games we're looking at this week. Davenport West taking on Dubuque Senior. We just talked about the Falcons being 5-0. and They will look to go to 6-0 and against a Dubuque Senior team that just fell short last week. They are going to be a tough contest. It'll be one of those true games to see if Davenport West is legit. If not, they have a couple more big ones against Cedar Rapids Kennedy and Iowa City High as the season progresses. One game here on CISN, Ankeny taking on Valley. The Tigers, not quite the team that we've seen in previous years, but they beat Ankeny last year in the regular season, 38-35, and a thriller. Can they do it again at Ankeny Stadium? The Hawks look for a challenge against the Valley Tigers. Ankeny Centennial is taking on Urbandale. The Jaguars coming off a big win against Sioux City East. Urbandale, a little inconsistent, but could get a big win. Ankeny Centennial, some people think they could go undefeated the rest of the season and finish the season 7-2. We'll have to see how that one shapes out. Another one here on the Central Iowa Sports Network. Dowling taking on Johnston. You heard from Coach Wilson talking about the defense of Johnston. Can Dowling get over that hump? Can Dowling pitch another shutout? They've pitched two straight so far. Dowling and company look to move to six and one on the C or five and one on the season. Another one of our final games that we're doing here on CISN tonight. Waukee, their homecoming against Sioux City North. The Stars come down from the Sioux City area to take on a 1-4 and four walkie team looking to get in rhythm and grab their second win of the season. And then a sneaky good game. How about Des Moines North? 4-1 and one on the season, trying to move to 5-1 and one on the season. Des Moines North could get a 5-1 and one Ankeny and a, or a 5-1 Ankeny and a 5-1 and one Des Moines North next week. Roosevelt always a tough out. And with Aaron Goncarian, the number one running back in Class 5A for Des Moines North, the Polar Bears will be a tough out. That will wrap it up for us here on the CISN Football Pregame Show presented by Iowa Corn. I am your host, Blake Walker. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. We're going to send it to Mark Amadeo and company for our Dowling versus Johnston game here on the Central Iowa Sports Network. Thank you all so much for watching. Mark, we're sending it to you.
Dowling four and one and uh, ranked second in the state with uh, everybody kind of beating each other up. Southeast Polk, Ankeny, Dowling, all with losses here in Central Iowa, but uh, uh, Pleasant Valley undefeated at five and zero. Oh, the only, the lone, I think, the, the only, one of two undefeated teams in Class Five A because Davenport West, who's ranked tenth, is also undefeated. So. Uh, they're all kind of beating each other up, Coach. They are. You kind of expect that here in town. You know, it's in the metro here, and as you go out and in, in this area, it's it's good football. And these teams know each other well. They prep for each other a lot, and so it's it's a dogfight every night. And this Johnson team is going to be come in here, you know, and, and look to make that upset, look to make their place in that top ten and, and try to um, earn some of that back and, and for this Dowling team, it's trying to pick up where they left off, you know, and they had that um, the momentum has been building with every game, and you see some things that have gotten better every game, and, and, they're, and they're really pretty healthy tonight as well. Yeah, with the exception of uh, Schumacher, Schumacher, the kicker, right. he will not uh, participate tonight. We have John Scheid on the Dowling sideline. Speaking of uh, getting uh, uh, down in, to the nitty-gritty, you're on the sideline, John. You're going to hear – uh, maybe a lot tonight as far as hitting. We, we weren't able to experience that too much last week with our troubles we had with the audio at, at Council Bluffs, but tonight you're going to be right down there with all the hitting as you predicted. Yeah, it's nice to be back in the trenches because when you're up close like this, you can see a lot of that, feel a lot of that, and also feel the enthusiasm on the sideline, you know, whether it's stale, upbeat, whatnot. And, uh, you know, getting this far into the season, I, we're, we're at, what, fifth? fifth ball game of the year week six week six yeah. week six already you're going to start feeling this playoff atmosphere and kids start getting prepared and and finally getting into that football condition and and there is zero wind tonight guys and and it's it's cool temperatures it finally feels like football season. Yeah, it certainly does as the uh, humidity has went away and the cooler temperatures have settled in let's take a look at the class 5a rankings before we go to break want to welcome our cisn audience tonight as we are simulcasting now mr manry so be ready for that uh in case to do a tv shot you know we got yeah. we got to be ready for I'm that ready. i i yeah. missed the makeup uh, again <laughs> yeah. Number one team in Class 5A is Pleasant Valley. Second, number two is Dowling. Third is Ankeny, and Southeast Polk is fourth, followed by Cedar Rapids Kennedy, also undefeated at 5-0. and They are ranked fifth. That's the, clock, that's the top five in Class 5A, according to the Moines Register High School football rankings. Number six is Urbandale. Seventh is Cedar Rapids Prairie. Eighth is Ankeny Centennial. Ninth is Sioux City East. And tenth is undefeated Davenport West. So Davenport West, Cedar Rapids Kennedy, and Pleasant Valley are the lone remaining undefeated teams in class 5a all right both teams are out on the field we're going to take a break and when we come back we'll come we'll start with the starting lineups and of course uh, visit with uh, uh, john chido on the sidelines a beautiful night 71 degrees a slight wind out of east southeast it means it's blowing right into our windows whatever breeze it is at about 10 to 15 miles per hour that means little wind in the bowl down there on the field so we'll take a break and come back but first our uh, pregame prayer and uh, a word from Dr. Dan Ryan, the president of Dowling Catholic High School, as we return to homecoming and Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremonies tonight. It's Dowling and Johnson from Valley Stadium. Kickoff coming up, but first, our pregame prayer and a word from Dr. Ryan. Hi, this is Dr. Dan. Captain for the Lord, number 49, Peyton Thompson, 51, Carson Hagen, 35, Joe Hilly. Also for the Lord, Jackson Swalley, number 4, Peter Nixon, Nicholson, number 8. Dragons will kick off the Maroons will receive. Let's have, let's play football, let's have great sportsmanship not only on the field, but in the stands. Festival. Oh, 
of a nine-week regular season high school football schedule. Hard to believe, buddy. Six games with three remaining. This this is a lot of fun. We, we seem so far away. You know, it's it's funny tonight well, we, because we're so far away well, from each other. Your, we have your replay monitor. Yeah, tech. We, that separates there, us. And we we're, we're used to sitting in pretty tight quarters. Last no, week we were. Yeah, it's it's a, a great night. You know, the culmination of it the week is. with homecoming. The homecoming dance last night. But, you know, the thing that always gets exciting about tonight like that, you know, we had the middle school band out there, and we've got, you know, over 200 and some kids involved in a variety of different things, not even counting the football team that are engaged in other activities associated with these homecoming festivities, and, and it's just fun. We've got a great crowd in our student section tonight. Should be should be a lot of fun. And it's good to see Rashad Davis back. Johnny, let's go down to you. Rashad, the, the sophomore running back. Hurt against City High, didn't play last week. He and Jake Anderson back to receive the opening kickoff here, Johnny. And it's good to see him off the, uh, dis the injured list. Yeah, absolutely. When you have uh, Rashad Davis and C.J. Phillips with that one-two punch in the backfield, that brings that extra dynamic into that offensive game plan for Dallin. All right, set to uh, kickoff is Johnson, and that'll be Carson Hansen, the six-foot senior. He will boot it from the 40-yard line. Johnson will defend the south end zone. They'll be going right to left on your screen. High end of end kick, and it'll be fielded by Dowling in the end zone. That'll be a touchback by uh, Jake Anderson, who fielded the ball. First and 10, Dowling. Matt from the 20-yard line. The Dowling offense appears on the field first. It is. It's going to be a lot of fun to have uh, Rashad Davis out there, and I can tell the young man was excited today in the, in the building as well. Yeah, him and C.J. Phillip are a dynamic bunch, and behind that offensive line, they they can be they can hide behind them they can explode behind them and they're two different runners you know Davis has that little shift side to side CJ is more of a downhill runner just fun to watch Dowling will start CJ Phillip in the backfield and he gets the handoff trying to go right up over center kind of zigs and zags and plows through for about three yards it'll be second and seven for Dowling as he gets up to the 23 yard line it's at the Dowling offense here Offensive line, left tackle to right tackle, Kyle Rockers, Cade Batterton, Max Shelton is the center, Nate Agos the right guard, and George Nahas the right tackle. Tight ends are Jalen Thompson and Danny Nielsen. Wide receivers, Cooper Nicholson and Hank Brown, along with Bo Gamble and Michael Reichardt. Tailbacks, C.J. Phillip got the start. We'll see Rashad Davis. And the quarterback is Jackson Smolik, and Maroons come out with five receivers. They throw it left side. It's caught. And angling across the 25, up near the 27-yard line with the catch on the left side. We'll have to see which one of the five it was as he gets up off. C.J. Phillip comes off the bottom of that pile. And he was, so he's carried the ball once and he's caught the ball once, Matt. Yeah, C.J., just a, a multi-talented young man that can go and catch the ball and, and run the ball. And he's, you know, you want to get the ball in your best player's hands at times and, and let him go make plays. So here we go on third down. A gain of four for Phillip. It'll be third and three, and now Dowling will swing past the right side. It's caught and knocked down nicely with the op uh, open field tackle. It was Hank Brown on the reception for a loss and a play. Good job by the Johnson defense there, Matt. We talked about Jack C. Hoda at the, before the game, and uh, that's who that was. Is he was out there and was able to avoid the first block and uh, was able to get Hank Brown uh, behind the line of scrimmage, and a great play by him. So... Ball moved back to the 23-yard line, a loss of four after gaining four. Now the Maroons will punt, and Dowling will send in their wide receiver moving to punter, Cooper Nicholson. High end over end kick, takes a bounce inside the 50, and it'll be down right about the 44-yard line. That's where Johnson will take over, first and 10, from their own 44-yard line with 10.05 remaining here in the first quarter no score dowling and johnson here on iowa catholic radio and cisn.tv and john chida report from the uh, sideline nothing new there uh, dowling three and out johnson defense uh, had everything well uh, well guarded it seemed like johnny yeah uh, you know if you, you saw the first look it was a double type with one receiver a lot of motion there a lot of passes to the boundary i think you're going to see a lot more inside running game with spread out next time in the offense series Right, now Johnson's offense on the field and an inside handoff on first down from their own 44. Gains about six yards as up off the uh, bottom of the pile is a tailback, Blake Tubbs. And that's something Johnson has struggled with throughout the year. Uh, Matt is trying to find a consistent ground game, but that time Tubbs picks up six. He did, and it was uh, Jared Ricky on the stop there. And a nice hole off that left tackle. 
off tackle play and uh, kind of gouge the Maroons right there. All right, Will Nuss, a quarterback, a little jump pass for a screen. It is caught. That's Sean Strand with the reception. Penalty flag down and Strand near a first down, but this may be coming back as uh, some maroon shirts trying to get into the pile, and they may have been hit from behind. We'll see. It's holding yeah. against the Johnson Dragons. The Maroons had that pretty well defended on the uh, boundary here, out by the numbers, and and uh, one of the Johnson Johnson uh, linemen out there in front of that screen play grabbed a little jersey. Move the ball back to the 42-yard line. That means the holding held was done at the Dowling 48. So it'll bring up. Second and 12 for Johnson, our officials tonight. Mike Morrison is our referee from Clive. Jerry Bohay from Ankeny. Jeff Bunting, Sean Osland, and Russ Dempster round out our officiating crew. Thanks to them for being here tonight. Four receivers set for Johnson. Now it's back to throw. Fires near side incomplete as he tried to hit uh, Tatum Fox was the intended receiver, number 10, but uh, he threw to an area and he underthrew the ball. He was pressured a little bit, Rumley, also Rumley, uh, from his nose guard position, climbed, climbed the ladder there pretty quickly towards Nuss and was able to have him throw the ball a little quicker than he wanted to, otherwise, it, which caused that ball to skip into uh, the receiver, Tatum Fox. Third and 12 now for Johnson from their own 42-yard line, 9.06 remaining, first quarter, no score. Up front for Dowling, Carson Hagen, Ralston Rumley, as Matt mentioned, and Cody Hykus, the three down lineman. Linebackers are Braden Pearson, Joe Hughes, Jimmy Wanick, Dylan Manning, and Matt Hatton get the start. And now I'll pass it to the near side incomplete. Again, they go to the left side, and they were working on uh, Jake Anderson's side, and it's incomplete. It'll bring up fourth down. So both defenses uh, hold the offense to three and out, Matt. Kind of what we thought this game might start out as. You know, it's going to be a defensive battle early, and both two teams that know each other well and have prepped each other. These coaching staffs have gone against each other a lot. You expect that kind of defensive battle. Uh, slugfest at first. Little miss uh, uh, communication there between Nuss and his receiver as the receiver broke over the middle and Nuss threw towards the uh, sideline and nobody home. Mason Rother, Rothler rather, will be the long snapper. He'll snap to Will Safris, the punter, averaging about 34 yards punt. Good snap and the kick is away. It's a low line drive and right at uh, Trey Wilson from his 25 near side. 40 gets outside the outside the 35 and finally wrestled down. Nice return that time by Dowling Catholic. The Maroons will have pretty good field position as they will have it first and 10 from right around their own 34 yard line. So both teams defenses have uh, come to play tonight. And uh, John Chido, you were talking about this on the pregame show earlier. Are you hearing some hitting down there on the sideline? We'll go down to you. Yeah, and there's a lot of blitz packages being dialed up for Dallin Catholic on that last uh, that last series, and, and they're, they're having uh, Nuss throw the ball quicker than he wants to, and then on Johnson's side, they're doing the same thing, do a lot of movement up front for their defense line. All right, thank you, John, for that report from the Dowling sideline. The Maroons with the ball. Smolik, a little play action, fires a pass out incomplete. And I believe the intended receiver that time had the ball and dropped it. A little off balance was Bo Gamble. They were trying to do that quick screen. They had a run pass option on that play, the RPO, where both tackles were pulling to the right side, to the short side of the field, and Jackson read wide side and threw the quick receiver screen, and, and Bo Gamble couldn't quite scoop it up. All right, so Bo, so Michael Reichart and uh, Jalen Thompson split out wide to the top of the screen. They'll put Cooper Nicholson in motion. Now he Goes back, three receivers now left, two to the right, back to throw Smolik, and he wants to keep it, quarterback draw, and now he wants to run it, looking downfield, fires it out, and the pass is behind Cooper Nicholson, but he makes the catch. Great grab that time by Cooper at the 46-yard line. That should be good enough for a first down, and it is there, Matt. Jackson Smolik just continues to impress me, and it's not so much about the throw he just made, but it's about staying alive. And and you, you wonder, what does what the Division I team look for in a quarterback? Well, right there on that play, his ability to navigate in the pocket, get out to the boundary, get out to this right side, and then throw a strike to Nicholson for a first down. All right, Maroons with three receivers to the left. And now the tailback, Rashad Davis, is behind quarterback Jackson Smolik. Smolik back to pass, looking left, fires left, got a man open, caught inside the 40, down the far sideline, and finally knocked out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. Took a tremendous hit, but what a grab that time that by the Maroons, yep. and that is number 18. Or number 12. That's number 12, Bo Gamble. Gamble. Yep. Yeah, that's Gamble. 
they they ran a uh, trips left to the wide side of the field, and you're running three players at three different levels. One was underneath in the flats, one was in the middle, and one ran deep, and they left the middle guy open, Bo Gamble, and he's open down the sideline. Jackson Smoley finds him with the, on the target, and big play for the Maroons. 26-yard gain, first down Dowling at the Johnson 28. No score as we approach the eight-minute mark here in the first quarter from Valley Stadium on a beautiful night, 71 degrees at kickoff. Handoff up the middle, let's see Let's see, is that Phillip or Rashad? That's Davis. And Davis is back in there, and he gets uh, some grinds out down to the 24-yard line. Pick up a four. It'll be second and six for Dowling. On that right side of the line, you know, you're going behind Nate Agos and George Nahas and Max Shelton, and uh, it, Davis was able to hide in there behind him, get low, and, and keep his feet moving, keep him churning, and, and ground out four yards, and you'll take that. Now the Maroons have their tight end split out wide to left all alone. That's Jalen Thompson, 6'4", 235, senior. Three receivers at the bottom of the screen to the right and handoff for Rashad Davis, and he grinds his way down to the 20-yard line to pick up a four. So the Maroon offense picking up, uh, you know, big chunks of yardage. Uh, Johnson's offense, when they uh, rush the football, they average about 1.7 yards per carry, and that is something you can't do in this league. But... You know, they haven't, they've only had one series thus far. You, you can't be consistent offensively only running the ball with that much success. I think that's the biggest thing. If you want to look for, you're going to get a couple big shots, but you're not going to get the consistency that you need to do, that need to win. And off once again, Rashad Davis. This time he's stacked up and he tries to go over to left tackle where Kyle Rockers and Cade Batterton were, but he was stood up by the Johnson right defensive end and uh, tackle over there. And, Nice heads up job there, and that was uh, Jamar's Freeman, number 99, who's on that side there, Matt. Little decision right now for Coach Wilson. It's fourth and two, fourth and a short two from your own 20-yard line. You're gonna, you got your backup kicker. Schumacher is out. Blount, who did a really good job last week kicking mm -hmm. the football. I think right now uh, Coach Wilson's lined up to go for it and feels he has something that he can get. About 10 seconds left in the play clock. Three receivers left, one tight end. And the give is to Rashad Davis. He finds a seam. He's got the first down as he puts his head down inside the 15, down to the 14. So they spread Johnson out, and they go right over right guard and tackle. And that's where Nate Agos and Max Shelton at center open up a little bit of a seam in the hole. Smolik is making the read on this thing and, and looking at do we have numbers. And uh, number 35 for uh, Johnston had a shot right there, but Davis danced out of it, Austin Gray, and uh, gets the first down. Now they put Davis as a receiver wide to the left, so the young sophomore receiver to the left with uh, a slot receiver. Five receivers set again as Dowling goes in motion, back to throw as Smolik rolls to his right, looking, 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 wants to throw, fires in the end zone. The pass is incomplete in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. Now a penalty flag down as Cooper Nicholson was the intended receiver, but he had a lot of uh, escorts in there and yeah, J.J. Is, Shaw was one of the defensive backs back there, the strong corner. This is, gonna, this is a tough call because uh, Jackson Smolik was throwing into a knot hole right there. There was not much of a window, and uh, and Cooper Nicholson had a shot at it, but the, the Johnston defender didn't turn around, made no attempt at the ball, and ran over him. You know, we talk about that in the game. Mm -hmm. If the ball gets underthrown, it's really hard in that defender in that trail position to stop and not make the penalty. Well, Dowling's in the Bozen the Flores red zone. Say more with Bozen online at Bozen.com, 515-244-ROWS. That's 244-7673. And they rule the penalty against Johnston, so that'll put the Bruins first and goal at the seven-yard line of Johnston. No score, five and a half minutes left to go here in the first quarter. Mark Amadil, Matt Mandering, and... John Chido on the broadcast tonight for Iowa Catholic Radio. I want to thank the uh, CISN folks here tonight. Randy Nielsen, our producer, Lucius Pham, and A.J. Laporte, our photographers, our TV cameramen, if you're watching on YouTube and CISN. All right, they're all set. Dowling with a bunch of formation to the right. Nobody wide. And here is Smolik back to throw. Fires in the end zone. The ball is tipped and incomplete. He had two receivers 
One was running the under pattern. The second one, Jalen Thompson, was running the deep pattern, and the pass is incomplete. And I think Crutchlow was the under receiver, that the, the utility fullback, if you will, for Dowling, Matt. It got, yeah, and it got the guy that was um, trailing Hunter Crutchlow ended up tipping the ball for Johnston, deflected it, and just fortunate for the Maroons that it didn't get intercepted because the ball was, the ball was tipped and uh, then fluttered away, and you're right. The target was in the back of the end zone for Smolik. All right, Dowling now with second and goal at the three-yard line. Check that, at the seven-yard line. Here's a snap, back to throw as Smolik fires in the end zone for Nicholson, and the pass is caught. Touchdown, Cooper Nicholson on a seven-yard pass. It was actually second and three from the seven-yard line after the penalty. And touchdown, Cooper Nicholson with 5.19 to go here in the first quarter. Dowling strikes first here. Yeah, and as CIS, CISN shows the replay on this, that, that's just impossible to defend. Uh, Taylor Proctor was in position for uh, the Johnston Dragons, and you couldn't defend it any better because Smolik threw a perfect pass to Nicholson in the corner. And the extra point is up and good by Marty Blunt, the hold from Jack Jepson, and the snap from Carson Hagen. Dowling now leads seven to nothing, 519 to go in the first quarter alongside Matt Mainry and John Chido. Mark Amadale back with the kickoff after these messages here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. We all love a good win, however small or ordinary. Losing track of time, finding yourself with a few extra dollars in your pocket, soaking up the perfect Iowa day. These are the everyday delights and small victories that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the moments that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the corn they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and it's going to be an interesting patio furniture season this year. We have ordered a ton of merchandise, but due to supply chain issues, it's coming in a truckload at a time all summer long. If you want the best patio furniture, check early and check often. If you want to custom order your furniture, get in here as soon as you can to give your furniture the best chance to arrive this summer. Fireplace Superstore, Iowa's best patio furniture selection, just east of I-35 on Douglas Avenue. Scoring and on the return for Johnston, that was Jeff Scott on the return. And they'll give the Dragons a first down just outside the 25 yard line. The Maroons going 10 plays, 65 yards on their drive, capped off by Cooper Nicholson, seven yard touchdown pass, touchdown reception from quarterback Jackson Smoley. And Marty Blount's extra point made it 7 0. John Chide will come on in, a nice drive by the Maroons, 10 plays. And 65 yards took about uh, three minutes. Yeah, how about that fourth and two execution that continued that drive and able to get in the red zone and get seven points? It's a, a big boost for the Dowling offense. Yeah, no question about that. Now, first down for the Johnston offense. Dragons from their own 28-yard line is first down run that time by the tailback, Blake Tubbs. And not a bad run up to the 35-yard line. Picks up seven yards. So that's back-to-back -back first down. Uh, plays they've run at least six or seven yards. Man. Yeah, it's the, it was the same play they ran the last series to the other side. So they just flipped the formation, ran the same thing off tackle. Here's a first down carry. Tubbs right over right tackle as uh, he followed uh, Jay Musinich and Alex Flores. We talked about that young man, Flores, the uh, six foot, 250 pound senior who transferred from Arizona, and he starts at right guard, and that's who he followed. That's a that's a big fella. Too. It's a big guy. <laughs> Nick Frerichs there on the stop for the Maroons uh, in the secondary, and that's not where you want your um, secondary making their tackles. All right, uh, handoff once again to Tubbs, and this time Dowling converges on him and no gain, and maybe a loss in a play from the 42-yard line. So the Dragons getting big chunks there from their tailback, Tubbs, and all of a sudden he's dropped there to bring up second and 10 from the Johnson 42. Dowling leading 7-0 as we approach the four-minute mark here in the first quarter on homecoming. And Athletic Hall of Fame night here at yeah, Valley Stadium big, for Dowling Catholic. Big night. Johnson's found a little something with sealing down the inside and kicking out the outside leverage, and that's what they were doing all these last couple of plays. This time Nuss back to throw, tries to hit over the middle, and that was Sean Strand incomplete. The second time he's targeted Strand tonight. The pass is broken up just on the other side of the 50-yard line, so that'll bring up 
Third and 10, Johnston from their own 42 yard line, and that's the last thing you want against Dowling is third and long. If third, off third and long. And, and that time they had a little, you know, Nuss had a little time, had a little time to set his feet and make a throw. But again, he was just a little underthrown and, and made the receiver go to the ground and try and get it. All right, here's Tubbs out of the shotgun. And the blitz is on. He's being chased. Hagan almost had him. Runs away. Fires the ball downfield. He's got a man open over the top at the 30, 25, and wrestled from behind. Inside the 10-yard line is a Johnson receiver. Woodley with the catch. Woodley released. Saw, saw Nuss getting chased by Hagan and uh, released down the sideline. And, and Nuss makes a, a heck of a throw on the run and hits him in stride. Hagan... Thought, how did that kid get away from me? But he did, and, and he just flicked the wrist, threw it down the field to um, to Woodley, and good play by Ricky to save a touchdown. Pass goes for 50 yards and a Johnson first down. Goal to goal, Dragons at the Dowling eight. So the Dragons now threatening in red zone territory, and now here is Nuss, and he'll keep the football on round right in, and he gets down to about the six yard line. And I think that was a called play from the huddle. He just kept the football and ran with it, and that was not uh, Nuss. That was uh, Adrian Broaddus, the back yeah, quarterback they, on the run. They come into this wildcat formation, what I would call a wildcat formation, I guess, and bringing in um, Broaddus. I noticed this on tape, too. A few times they'll bring him in, and, and then he is the quarterback, but he is more geared to run because Nuss has only run the ball, I think, of, you know, really, he's only got nine yards on the year, maybe negative six, if I remember right. Not yet. He's only had nine rushes this year. Anthony, Anthony Kiatamba is a left tackle. Dom LaPere is the left guard. The center for Johnson is R.J. Jordan. Floor is the right guard. And Jacob Simpson is the tight end. And Jay Musinich is the right tackle. So a timeout on the field. We'll take one ourselves. Two and a half minutes left to go first quarter. Dowling seven. Johnson nothing. Johnson will have a second and goal from the six-yard line when we return here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Not all used vehicles are created equal. DRM and certified used vehicles have a big advantage. What sets us apart is that all used vehicles receive a 175 point inspection. Carfax report, two oil changes, collision deductible coverage, and wheel dent and windshield repair. Also, all DRM and certified come with two warranties. A one year, 12,000 mile bumper to bumper and a two year, 100,000 mile powertrain. DRM and Ford Indianola, DRM and Automotive Knoxville, DRM Right back here at Valley Stadium, Nuss kind of scrambling from the pocket, looking for somebody to dump it off to, and he overthrew everybody and on purpose, incomplete. So to bring up third and goal, Johnson, from the six-yard line, as the Dragons got the big play on third and ten, they hit uh, Woodley, Rex Woodley, on a 50-yard pass that got the Dragons down to the eight. Broaddus picked up two yards, and now they've kind of been stifled here, Matt. Uh, and uh, we'll see what comes up. What's dialed up by the Johnson offense here? A young quarterback, you know, he's noticed that Woodley, or I mean, the Nuss, his, his go-to is releasing to the right side. He was gonna, he's gonna be flushed to the right, and that's where they're pushing him. All right, Nuss back to throw, stays in the pocket, fires near side, it's intercepted by Dowling. He threw it right into the hands of the Maroons, and the Maroons are gonna have it right at the one yard line, and I believe it was Noah Seamer who came away with it. We'll go to, down to John Chido, but what a big play interception as we'll try to get the replay here on CISN, Matt. It was Noah Seamer, and you know, and Nuss, he, he's throwing a timing pattern out there to Tatum Fox, and uh, Seamer's sitting all over it and, and was able to step up. That's one of those plays you can make when you have more room. That's right. All right, let's go down to John Scheidel. Big play by Seamer. That's his first interception of the year, Johnny. Yeah, Matt's exactly right. That's like a back shoulder type play to the outside of that end zone. But when you have a tight window like that, and, and Seamer just stood right in the passing lane, there was just nowhere for that receiver to step up and try to make a play on that football. And, and a great job by Noah Seamer. Yeah, Noah thought he could run it out of the end zone. Instead, he was tackled by the uh, tethered receiver at the two-yard line. So Dowling, their backs against the wall, first and ten from their own two-yard line. And 
They're going to grind it out. The give is to uh, C.J. Phillip, I believe, who's in there, and he keeps his feet moving. He may have gotten a yard up to the three-yard line, so bring up second and nine. It was Phillip, and uh, that's the downside of trying to run it out of the end zone and getting tackled from behind. Maroons are backs against the wall. They need some breathing room here, Matt. With they, they got, I think they got every tight end and lineman in there to uh, form that wall. <laughs> <think> so too, <laughs> looking on the, you know, you're looking at CISN. You see Jalen Thompson and Phil. Everybody looking at it. And then you see that big offensive line, and you got Hunter Crutchlow in there. You got everybody in there. There's a lot of meat on the. There's a lot of meat in that <laughs> line right now. All right, two tight ends. The back, uh, the tailback is C.J. Phillip, Jackson Smolik. It's a snap. Give to C.J. Looking for a seam. Gets a couple yards and. Pulls over a player right about the seven yard line for a gain of four. And that'll bring up third down and four for Dowling from the their own seven yard line following the Noah Seamer interception. A little run over Nehas there, and you know it was a kind of a slow developing play and, and allows uh, Phillip to read where he's going. You have Nehas and Jalen Thompson kind of cleaning up some space there. And then uh, number five for um, um, Jared Klon comes in makes play. All right, here is pass on the near side, and it's caught first down that time as Cooper Nicholson had to come back for it right about the 20-yard line, so that's good enough oh. for a 13-yard game. They're going to... There's the laundry on the field. Uh, call penalty flag in the backfield on Dowling. The only upside is, is half the distance isn't very much. So <laughs> it only it'll bring up third and long. Third and long. So it's half the distance to the goal. Be about a four-yard penalty or so. Three and a half yard line, Matt. Yep, three and a half. <laughs> Let's flip the difference. Yep. All right, it'll be a third and long for Dowling. The Maroons can get a first down just outside the 11-yard line. Their Maybe. math must have been different than my math because they put that ball in the one-yard line. Uh, it was spot support. foul, I suppose, to split the difference there. I guess that the, ball, the flag was sitting on the two. All right, from the one-yard line, Dowling with their backs to the, their own end zone, back to throw Smolik, a little pass out of the backfield. It's caught, and that's C.J. Phillip, and he gets back up to the seven-yard line, which is where they were before the penalty, and that will bring in the punting unit, and Johnson's going to have pretty good field position depending on how this punt goes, uh, but they're looking at pretty good field position here. Yeah, C.J. Phillip made a really good play right there, and you can ask Johnny, too. He, he, Caught that ball in the end zone and had a defender right there and worked his way out to give the room, gave us seven yards. Yeah, Johnny, that's uh, you're asking your uh, receiver to make one move there, aren't you? Yeah, but not in the end zone. So uh, <laughs> you typically want to throw it uh, out of the end zone. That's oh, high right. snap, and uh, the Maroons will throw it away. They're going to call oh. it a safety as yep. Nicholson was out of the end zone when he came down with it. So our score now is Dowling 7, Johnston 2. As a safety on a high snap there by on the punting unit. And the coach is going to talk to Nicholson because the worst thing he could have done right there was try to throw it because he was he didn't know what to do with the ball, and he's laying on the ground. He's going to try and throw it because then it's a incomplete pass. All right, we'll take a break. Dowling leads it 7-2 to two over Johnson. Three seconds left in the first quarter. We'll return for the Dowling kickoff as they'll have to punt it away after following the safety by Johnson here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. Off to college. Oh, rats. Hi, Joe the Car Guy with a reminder. Before you send your kids off to school, set up an appointment with Westside Auto. We check everything from tires to belts, fluids, hoses, wipers, and lights. 44 inspection points to help prevent that oh, rats moment for your students. Call us today to set up your appointment. We'll have your kids off to school saying, For the best, head west. Westside West Auto. Auto. the end of the first quarter as Dowling kicks off as actually Cooper Nicholson punts the ball. Fair catch signal for by Woodley. So Rex Woodley with the fair catch signal at the 39-yard line. That's where Johnson will start from their own 39. With two seconds remaining here, uh, Matt Mandry, uh, John Dowling 
you know, they had that interception by Seymour, and they stayed in their own end zone, and they couldn't get out of their own way with the high snap. That really cost them the this. penalty hurt them. That too. Now they give it to the, the tailback, and that's Blake Tubbs, and he'll carry for the final play of the first quarter, gets across the 40, and they're going to spot him on the 40. So we've come to the end of the first quarter from Valley Stadium in West Des Moines on a beautiful night, 71 degrees at uh, game time temperature, homecoming and athletic hall of fame. Uh, recognition for some of the Dowling former athletes, and we'll be back to talk to that in a little bit as we've come to the end of the first quarter. Dowling 7, Johnston 2, here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISA. We are. We are. We are so much more than an energy company. We are connectors, community protectors, and clean energy leaders. We are job creators, friends and neighbors, stewards of your dollars and savings. Yes, we. We. We are so much more. We are the energy behind your everyday. And we are obsessively, relentlessly at your service. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Second quarter and Tubbs, or rather a quarterback, uh, Will Nuss, hooks up with a, a wide receiver that was caught for a first down for Johnson. That's Jacob Simpson. They're tied in for the first time tonight, Matt. Yeah, 6'5", 220 going over the middle. Big target, and Nuss found it. So first down at the Dowling 42, and now they go back to the ground. And Blake Tubbs again, the ball carrier, this time can't turn the corner, and he may have lost a yard or... Close to it, no gain in the play. They'll call it officially second and ten as Tubbs tried to go to run, go around right in. He went around right in, and Jimmy Wanick was like a missile coming down his lane and and uh, met him at the hole and and drove him backwards right away. Good hit by Jimmy Wanick. So Simpson with an 18-yard gain for a first down, and then Tubbs on first down goes nowhere. So to bring up second down and ten from the Dowling 42, the Maroons lead it seven to two. And now here's Nuss back to throw, tight end screen. They. They hit Sean Strand. He's loose. He may go. He's inside the 20 and finally arm tackle right about the 15-yard line. It'll be first down, Johnston, and Strand got loose. He found a seam just outside the numbers on the right side. He did. Well-designed play. They had that screen set up on the right side, and Nuss is looking to the left, looking to the left, comes back to the right, and uh, 18, Strand is open, and, and uh, if not for the tackle of um, Jake Anderson, that's a touchdown. 28-yard gain, first down, Johnston at the Dowling 14. Dragons threatening to take the lead with a touchdown or cut it to two with a field goal. Back to throw, Nuss has a man wide open over the middle. Touchdown, Dragons, as he found his wide receiver on a crossing route and hit him perfectly, and that was Sean Strand who's come up with some big catches. They've kind of taken away Woodley and not focused on Strand, but Strand's like their second or third leading receiver. Touchdown, Johnston. He is. He came back. He was on the left side and came over the middle, and uh, and uh, Nuss put it right on him as he got behind the linebackers and found that seam in the middle of the field, and six points for Johnston. 10-29 remaining first quarter, or second quarter, rather, in the and it's Johnson taking the lead, 8-7. to seven. Extra point is up, and it is good. So the Dragons now lead it 9-7 to seven over Dowling Catholic with 10-29 remaining here in the second quarter as the extra point was good by Carson Hansen on the hold by Daniel Breider. We'll be back from Valley Stadium on Dowling's homecoming. Dragons 9, Dowling 7 here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. Free Godfather's Pizza. Begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Do you know what the best part about being a dog is? You can hear disaster before it even happens. 
You know what they say about disaster. Sometimes it can inspire a symphony. An honest day's work deserves an honest day's treat. No extra charge. And that is why we choose honest wrenches. No extra charge. And it's how service should be. Valley Stadium on Dowling's homecoming. Mark Amadale, Matt Mandering, John Scheidel. As the Johnson Dragons go six plays, 61 yards, capped off by a touchdown pass from quarterback uh, Will Nuss to Sean Strand of 14 yards. Extra point good. And now Dowling on the kickoff return. Not a bad return by the, the Maroons. And now a penalty flag in the back end up to the 42 yard line by Rashad Davis. And they may add some more here. Let's go down to John Scheidel. John, let's bring you in. We've got a lot to recap here. Uh, the Johnson drive, scoring drive, first of all. Yeah, and I want to go back. It was, it was Jake Anderson on the pickoff. So you have Dowling intercepts it, takes the safety. You're still in an okay position, and then you, cause you're not kicking out of your end zone. And then Johnson comes back with a great drive. And that screen was set up with a nice pulling guard to make that uh, uh, wide receiver go free. And then and then the, the touchdown from Strand over the middle. And it just shows you how things can just turn so quick when you have momentum going one way, and then boom, Johnson comes back and they take the lead. And then Al Dowling gets a benefit here. Thank you, John, for that sideline report. The Bruins will start first and 10 from the Johnston 43. And now the Bruins will give it to Rashad Davis on first down carry. And he gets nice his way down near the 40. We're going to call it the 41 gain of two to bring up second and eight here, Matt. Jake, Jake Anderson was the return guy for the Maroons on that kickoff. And, and they had the face mask when they tackled him. He had a nice alley and got up the field. And so now the Maroons get the field position they they want, and, and now they're going to put a drive together. Johnson penalized on the kickoff return. You mentioned Jake Anderson on the return. He got it up to the Dowling 42, and they tack on 15 more with a face mask penalty. So the Maroons are the first down at the Johnson 43, and then Davis picks up two. Here's back to throw a Smolik over the middle. A nice pass caught by Cooper Nicholson on the going across the eight. Breaks a tackle at the 25, or rather the 15, and finally wrestled down inside the 15 down to the 14 yard line. How about the yards after catch for Mr. Cooper Nicholson wearing number eight there? And there's the replay. You know, if you're if you are watching on TV, you know, they sent Cooper Nicholson in motion. And they went halfway across formation and back. And why do they do that? They want to see if it's man coverage. They know they've got man coverage on, on Nicholson and he is a tough cover in that. So they send him over the middle uh, and uh, Smoley hits him and breaks those tackles. He, he broke about three tackles in there get down to the 13 yard line. And the Maroons are in the Bozen the Flores red zone and now here is a handoff left side and that is Rashad that Davis it. touchdown yep. as he boy that was a well developed play. Watch the replay here Matt. Dowling yep. had everybody going right including the passing routes and Rashad Davis came back across the green. The, the play is set up so they run heavy right. They run Jalen Thompson in motion to the right. And they hesitate a little bit and they hand the ball off to Rashad Davis, who's got essentially one blocker out there, and he's got one guy to beat, and he beats him. Touchdown, Maroons. So Rashad Davis scores from 13 yards out. And for Rashad, that is his fourth touchdown of the year. And the extra point now coming from the young sophomore, Marty Blount, who's been doing the kicking duties due to a Schumacher's injury, and the ball is down. The kick is up and good. So Dowling retakes the lead, 14-9 over the Johnson Dragons. 9.05 left to go in the second quarter on homecoming and athletic hall of fame for Dowling tonight from Valley Stadium on a beautiful night. We'll take a break. 9.05 left to go, second quarter. Dowling 14, Johnson 9. Back with more on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. Off to college. Oh, rats. Hi, Joe the Car Guy with a reminder. Before you send your kids off to school, set up an appointment with Westside Auto. We check everything from tires to belts, fluids, hoses, wipers, and lights. 44 inspection points to help prevent that oh, rats moment for your students. Call us today to set up your appointment. We'll have your kids off to school saying, For the best, head west. Westside West Auto. Auto. 
Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Valley Stadium. Blount kicks off for Dowling Catholic on the return up to about the 30 yard line is uh, Johnston and that is Tatum Fox on the return. As Maroons now retake the lead by the score of 14 to 9 over Johnston. Let's go down to the Dowling sideline and Johnny nice drive by the Maroon offense. Rashad Davis running in from 13 yards. Three plays 58 yards helped out by the nice return by Jake Anderson, uh, Johnny, along with uh, the penalty being assessed to the Johnson defense. Maroons had great scoring run there. Yeah, Rashad Davis with a nice cut. He was one-on-one -on -one with the outside linebacker, and the linebacker was there to make the, the play, but Rashad had such a great cut and great speed and quickness to cut inside and then kick it back outside. Just, just a great dynamic play by Rashad Davis. It certainly was. Now Johnson with the uh, football. They have a first down here, Matt, on their own. 30 yard line and they run it on first down to get a few yards, maybe four up to the 34 yard line. Nice strong run there by uh, or by Tubbs and they, he's been running hard tonight. They've, they've had some alleys for a team that hasn't, as you pointed out earlier, one point some yards per carry. Not much. They've been able to move the ball on the ground. Yes, they have. So it's second and six Johnson from their own 34 back to throw is Nuss, fires over the middle. The pass is incomplete. They're working on that one area, and I think that was the tight end that was uh, involved there, Jacob Simpson, number 88, that was incomplete. They're working on that little crossing route left to right, and they're trying to isolate. Uh, well, they got the big guy. Uh, Simpson is one of them, Matt. Yeah, Simpson, 6'5", 220, and you got him on, you know, Jake Anderson, 5'10", 180. There's an advantage there, and you get that big frame in front, and they're going to try and take advantage. All right, Nuss out of the shotgun, rolls to his right, looks right, and throws, and the pass is caught by Sean Strand, and what a game he's had thus far in the first half. And he's uh, run out of bounds right about the 44, and that should be good enough for a first down, and it is. Nuss did a really good job rolling to his right. He looked left first. It looked like he was going to try and find Simpson again for a second, then changed directions, rolls all the way across the field and from the hash, throws it to Strand on the boundary at the end and, and turns it up field gets a good game. Can't wait to see Strand's numbers at halftime when uh, Jared Seifert brings the uh, halftime numbers to us before we go to break. A reminder at halftime we'll go down to John Scheidel who will be interviewing the Dowling head coach Tom Wilson. Coach in his uh, 18th year here at Dowling his 30th year overall in coaching. Handoff goes to Tubbs once again and Blake Tubbs 5'10", 175 pounds senior grinds his way up over center. Sat out last year, he had an ACL injury and came back strong in the track season and picks up, uh, what, about a yard up to the 45. They spot his knee down there. Yeah, not much in that play and a good job of the Dowling defense to um, make the make the stop. And uh, so it was makes it third, second long. And you want to put the pressure on so they can pin their ears back and get after Nuss and make him make decisions in that pocket. All right, here is Johnson as back to throw his nuts. He's hit as he throws, and the pass is, they're going to say, caught right at the Dowling 46-yard line. Nuss was under duress, and, mind, he was leveled. Let's see if we get the replay well, on that. Yeah, but. Noah Seamer came off the right edge, off the defensive right edge, into the left side of Nuss right where he was throwing and uh, stuck him just as he was getting rid of the football. Strand uh, with the big catch. There, Strand man. with another big catch as he's having a heck of a night. So it'll be first and 10, Johnson from the Dowling 46, a nine-yard reception that time by Strand. And now Nuss, a little play action, gives it to Tubbs, and he's hit and stood up at the 45, maybe a yard. So it'll bring up second and nine for the Dragons. And they're trying to, you know, Johnson goes probably 70% pass, 30% run somewhere in there. And tonight they're trying to stay balanced, actually a little bit more ru running, and they're trying to get that ground game going. And that all has to do with the offensive line. They have three starters back from last year. Kia Tumwa, the left tackle. Musinich, the right tackle. And the center, R.J. Jordan. But they've got to, you know, build that momentum. And that's what they're trying to do, according to it looks like what Coach Woodley is uh, 
grinding out here. Back to throw is Nuss. Over the middle, fires it up and fires it downfield. It's caught. First down, Johnston. And they found the seam in the Dowling defense. And that on the reception that time was Tatum Fox with his first reception. They found a soft spot in the middle of that zone defense. And we saw that early in the year at the Southeast Polk game where they got behind the linebackers and in front of the, the two deep safety look and were able to hit that middle seam. And they took advantage of it right there again. Nuss to a wide open Tatum Fox. Ball on the 22-yard line, so that is a 22-yard reception. Now here's a pass downfield. The pass is intercepted. He threw it into traffic, and Dowling comes away with its second interception of the night. And now the Wait, officials are going to stop play. Is there a penalty flag down? I don't see anything on the field. We'll check the replay here in a moment, but the I, officials I are this, are they, this. This is not. This has been held up for for now at the ten yard line, and we'll. Oh, there to, is a flag down. We'll try to catch the official here. Call him pass interference on the Maroons. So that changes things. It goes to a first and ten, Johnston. And the line of scrimmage was the twenty-two. We'll see how the officials. Uh, see, they're gonna. I'm. It'll be half the distance. Uh, yeah, it'll be half the distance. I was trying. I watched the replay, and the receiver came out of his break, and there was some hand fighting there, but it didn't really impede the receiver. The official thought doesn't matter what I think, but the official <laughs> thought there was enough there to impede the receiver, and he threw the flag. All right, so it's first and ten, Johnson from the Dowling eleven. After they mark half the distance to the goal, the Johnson offense will stay out there. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Ashworth Vision Clinic, construction professionals, and dental associates. First and 10, Johnson. They got two receivers right, two to the left. Man in motion is Tubbs. Here's Nuss back to throw. Looks left, throws over the middle, and the pass is incomplete. Nice design play, but quarterback Nuss led his receiver just a little too much there, and the pass is incomplete. I believe it was Woodley setting up for a flanker screen. Yeah, a little bit there, and you know, and actually the lineman actually got in his way a little bit and held him up, and it caused a little bit of a distraction there, um, and uh, didn't allow the pass to get completed. All right, so that'll bring up second and 10, Johnston from the Dowling 11. The Maroons lead it 14-9 to here in the second quarter. Back to throw is Nuss, he fires it out. It's caught by Tubbs, and he finally slides down to the four-yard line. He was shy of the first down. Dragons can get a first down right around the one-yard line, and Tubbs is, uh, loses his balance right at the six for a gain of five. They've been throwing a lot of screens tonight. There's just a lot of screens being thrown in this offense, and it's the quick release taking advantage of the aggressiveness of that Dowling defense. But Cody Hykus on that play made a great, great play from his down-line position. He recognized the screen, three steps in, and Dropped off and tackled um, Tubbs from behind. All right, Dragons with two receivers on each side of the formation, tied in on the right side. Tubbs in the backfield, and Nuss now sends Tubbs in motion. We got a timeout called. So we well, they got a flag. A procedure call against Johnston. Somebody moved, and that is a dead ball foul. It'll move them back five yards back to the 11 yard line of Dowling. Play clock was running down, too, and I didn't know if Coach Woodley was going to call a timeout or not, and he didn't. Probably wishes he would have now. The Johnson <laughs> offensive coordinator this year is Jeff Lynch in his first year, taking over for Brett Becker, whose wife got a job outside of Des Moines, so she, he had a move. Defensive coordinator, as we mentioned, Jeff Helgeson. And the special teams coach is Mark Teagles. All right, here's Johnson, third and ten. And now Nuss will keep it, wants to run, looks in the end zone, fires, and a pass is caught. Did he stay in? Incomplete. I caught it think, out of bounds. I think he was over the line of scrimmage. Well, they, risked, yeah. they, they didn't talk no, about they, that, man. They, they, just, talked, they threw the flag now. He caught the uh, pass out of bounds, did the receiver. Oh, and so that was staying. Jacob Simpson. He caught the ball, but he caught it on the boundary, and now you've got over the line of scrimmage, and they're yep. going to assess that penalty. And that's a, isn't that a loss of down as well, Should isn't be. it? Should yes. be. Fourth down now for Johnston. I thought as he was scrambling, he was a little bit because he threw it, and his feet were across the 10. We could probably see it on the replay here. Um, but he was definitely across the line of scrimmage. All right, the officials now are, are going to huddle up. Let's bring in John Chida. We normally don't do this in the middle of a drive. We don't want to catch you off guard, Johnny, but uh, your thoughts thus far. And the Maroons look like they're going to they're gonna accept this penalty. I don't think they have any choice. Yeah, because it's going to be fourth down, this loss of down. And he was across. He was two yards across the line of scrimmage, but nice job by 
by Heikis and Hagen putting the pressure to make Nuss roll that pocket, but I never thought you had one interception earlier that ended up leading to a, to a safety and then a, a touchdown, right? Then you had another interception here, and then you had the pass interference that's potentially going to be uh, led to three points. So I'd never seen when you have the turnover battle, you're winning that or possibly a second turnover, and you're still going to give up scores, and Johnson's still in this ballgame. Well, the drag is now going to attempt the 33-yard field goal. Thank you for that report, uh, Johnny. The holder will be Daniel Greider. The long snapper is Nathan Rothler, and the kick is up. The field goal is good. So the drag is now on the 33-yard field goal. Have cut the lead to 14-12, to Dowling over Johnson. What an affair we have tonight. This could be a good one. With 4.46 to go in the second quarter, Dowling 14, Johnston 12 on the field goal by the Dragons. We'll, we, we'll take a break and come back here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. I'm off to college. Oh, rats. Hi, Joe the Car Guy with a reminder. Before you send your kids off to school, set up an appointment with Westside Auto. We check everything from tires to belts, fluids, hoses, wipers, and lights. 44 inspection points to help prevent that oh rats moment for your students. Call us today to set up your appointment. We'll have your kids off to school saying, For the best, head west. Westside West Auto. Auto. Catholic Radio. Stadium on Dowling's homecoming and Athletic Hall of Fame induction night. Here's a kickoff by the Dragons, a little pooch kick, and it'll be fielded by Dowling at the 11. And on the return, that is Jake Anderson near side, and he's going to be running out of bounds as he crossed the 35 up near the 37 yard line. That's where the Maroons will take over, first and 10. But John and Matt, as we look at that last drive by the Dragons, it went 11 plays and 70 yards. And the Dragons settle for a 33-yard field goal by Carson Hansen. We had some big plays. Johnny, you can talk a little bit about this or find the seam. Fox with a 22-yard reception and Strand with a 9- and 10-yard reception, respectively, during that drive. So they found a little seam in the Dowling secondary, Johnny. Yeah, they're, they're doing three-by-one sets, and they're using their, their, their running backs and their receivers and kind of motion back over the middle and finding those, those, those holes in between, like Matt said, the safeties and the outside linebackers. So... Those linebackers, when they're man coverage, they're the ones that have to count for that, that extra running back when they go in that passing route. All right, Dowling on first down from their own 37-yard line. little swing pass that is caught by the uh, Dowling receiver that time, and that is number 80, Hank Brown, if you're watching on TV. And Hank maybe got a yard. A lot of, lot of east-west running and not enough north-south. And second and nine coming up here, Matt. A lot of running for one yard, and J.T. Freeman did a really good job from his down lineman position to chase that down and make the tackle on Hank. As we approach the four-minute mark of the first half, timeouts remaining. Johnson has two. Dowling has all three at their disposal. So it'll bring up second and nine. Maroons from their own 38. Back to throw is Smolik. Fires the ball out. He's got Jalen Thompson open. Caught inside the 30 of Johnston and finally run out of bounds at the 25-yard line. The big boy, Jalen Thompson, 6'4", 235. That's Dowling's tight end, matching up with his uh, his counterpart over on the Johnson side, Jacob Simpson at 6'5", 220. Boy, it's been the night of the tight ends yeah, all of a sudden. Uh, Jalen just got isolated on that outside there and and uh, let, got released, and he, he is fast for as big as he is and was able to get loose over the top, and Smolik put it right on him. 37-yard reception for Jalen Thompson. First down, Dowling at the... Johnson 25, Maroons lead 14 to 12. And Allen Dowling will go back to the ground game from their own, from the Johnson 25. They give it to, uh, is that Rashad Davis or Phillip? Uh, yeah, C.J. Phillip that time at number 30 for the Maroons. Um, on that right side of the line, again, run over Neos and, and Agos and Shelton, and that's where they are, have been consistently going tonight. And you, you pull big, either Batterton or Rockers across and kick out and, and lead up with Phillips and, and 
create some space. Gain of four, second and six, Dowling. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you by the Catholic Tuition Organization and Mercy One. Runs with three receivers right. And Phillip in the backfield. Phillip gets the handoff. C.J. bowls his way forward inside the 20. And he stopped right about the 16-yard line, a gain of five. And, boy, you saw that offensive line surge. And we've talked about that tonight. Rockers, Batterton, Shelton, Agos, and Nahas, the Dowling offensive line, left tackle to right tackle. Yeah, you'd like to give that offensive line five yards right there because that's really what it was. And C.J. Phillip runs up behind him and, and that offensive line just kept driving their feet onto the defenders of, of Johnston and churned out five yards. And creates a third and short. Runes will split out Cooper Nicholson. He'll be the flanker wide right or at the top of your screen if you're watching on CISN. Double tight end set, handoff, and they give it to Phillip, and he dances around. Now oh, gets loose. He's loose. inside the 10-5 touchdown. He got outside the right guard and tackle, Matt. Thought he was stopped by the linebacker and got into the Johnston secondary. Touchdown from 16 yards, and the Maroons now pull away, leading 20-12 to here with 215 or 217 left. Matt? They were bringing a blitz off the left side, and, and it got picked up by, I believe it was Hank Brown. I can't see if that was Hunter Crutchlow. And then C.J. Phillip got stacked up at the behind the line of scrimmage, was patient with his feet, patient with his hips, and slid outside and up the alley he went. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Construction Professionals and Dental Associates, along with Skeffington's and Blount's extra point is good. Dowling 21, or is it no good? They waved it off. It was a line drive. I couldn't no, they, they, they say it's good. 21-12 yeah. is our score. 217 remaining second quarter. We'll be back after these messages here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. I feel like we're live. 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Not all used vehicles are created equal. DeArmond certified used vehicles have a big advantage. What sets us apart is that all used vehicles receive a 175 point inspection. Carfax report, two oil changes, collision deductible coverage, and wheel dent and windshield repair. Also, all DeArmond certified come with two warranties. A one year, 12,000 mile bumper to bumper, and a two year, 100,000 mile powertrain. DeArmond Ford Indianola, DeArmond Automotive Knoxville, DeArmondAuto.com. Balls. Dowling kicks off to Johnston. Maroons lead it 21 to 12. And now on the kickoff, the return is to the near side as Johnston going left to right. And on that return was number nine, J.J. Shaw. Returns it, and Johnston will start first and 10 right around their own 30, or rather 26 yard line, it looks like, after uh, Dowling C.J. Phillips scores from. 16 yards out. Let's go down to John Chido for an update. And Johnny, both teams offensively have picked it up. It was a defensive start to the game, if you remember. Now the offense are scoring, whether it's three points, a safety, or uh, a touchdown. Yeah, and that, you know that that drive started with great field position with Jake Anderson. That's twice now mm -hmm. on his returns. It, it gives Dowling the short side of the field to deal with, and they've been capitalized on it. If, if they keep it together, and don't don't shoot themselves in the foot. Uh, good things go go right for the Dowling Maroons. All right, and now on first down, Johnson with the pass is incomplete. Tried to hit a little pop pass to Blake Tubbs. It's incomplete there, Matt. I, I was wondering what, when, if someone was going to throw the flag, and they finally did because late, late flag, late yeah. late flag, because it was a screen play, and Dowling has seen enough screens now. And when you do that, and then you throw the ball down the field, you've already got offensive linemen that are t five to ten yards downfield, and they call legal man down. I'm assuming that's what the call is going to be here. Illegal man downfield. Right, Dowling's last drive, five plays, 63 yards, capped off by C.J. Phillips. First touchdown of the night. Uh, Rashad Davis has well, a touchdown. Well, they're going to pick it up. They're going to wave it off. Yeah. The only thing I can think of is that they said the pass didn't go beyond the line of scrimmage, and that, that could be. So in high school football, if you, your lineman can get downfield and start blocking if the pass is thrown behind the line of scrimmage. And I'm assuming that's what the call was because big number 72 was – 
seven to eight yards downfield looking to block somebody. And you're talking about uh, Dom Lampera. Yeah. He's a starting left guard for uh, Johnston, but uh, they wave it off, so it brings up second and 10. Dragons, they trail 21 12. 206 left to go, second quarter from Valley Stadium. Beautiful night, 71 degrees, and now here's a long pass downfield. It's tipped away, incomplete. Nets. Was that Ricky that J or Jake, Jake Anderson, Anderson knocking away? Ricky did a, the yeah. job against City High, yeah. and now Anderson pokes it away from the attendant receiver, the big tight end, Jacob Simpson. That, that's a great play by Jake Anderson, and he's he's in the hip pocket just as you, as you would teach it. You want your defender in the hip pocket of that receiver as he's run down the field, sticks his hand out, breaks it up. Now Johnson in a passing situation. This might be their first series where they haven't run the ball at Dowling, where they were finding a little bit of success. And I say that, and they hand it <laughs> off to Tubbs, and he gets about five yards up to the 32-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down. And we might see the clock stopped here. Dowling may take a timeout, and they do. With a minute 53 to go in the first half, Dowling 21, Johnson 12. It'll be fourth down for Johnson. Fourth and about four, and they will punt. We'll take a break and come back here on CISN and Iowa Catholic Radio. I love a good win, however small or ordinary. Losing track of time, finding yourself with a few extra dollars in your pocket, soaking up the perfect Iowa day. These are the everyday delights and small victories that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans, and these are the moments that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the corn they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Fourth down for Johnson, four, third and fourth and three, and now Saffers into punt. High end over end punt, fielded as a fair catch right around the 20 yard line by Dowling Catholic. And that was, I believe, Cooper Nicholson back there. And Dowling will take over first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. So we'll go down to the Dowling sideline. I know, Johnny, you're going to catch up with Coach uh, Tom Wilson of Dowling Catholic here at halftime, but uh, Maroon defense comes up big as Johnson went to. Uh, Two straight pass, er, passing downs and uh, fell incomplete, and then uh, Tubbs on a third down run. Yeah, and, and that play was uh, uh, didn't operate the way Johnson wanted to because Dealing Manning uh, came from the backside and was able to, to, to get the ball carrier before he, he reached that uh, first down marker. It's a great play and, and reaction to, uh, by Dealing Manning. All right, Jackson Smolik, a uh, little play action, and he fires it out. And Bo Gamble with the catch on the far sideline. That's a little uh, fake out of the pocket, and he threw it to his right side, and Gamble gets up from his own 20 up near the 26-yard line. Dowling has uh, two timeouts remaining, as does Johnson here in the final minute 24 of the half, Matt. George Nehouse out there blocking for a big guy. That's a big guy in space. Back to throw is Smolik. Now flush from the pocket, still by, stays behind the line of scrimmage, fires it out, and the pass is caught on the far sideline. You say he was out of bounds. And yeah, another catch out of bounds. Yeah. We saw that by Simpson of Johnson earlier and that time Runes did the same thing, incomplete, and I think it was Gamble, the intended receiver. But nonetheless, it'll bring up third and four for the Maroons. The clock stopped with 69 seconds left to go in the half. And you can see the experience there for Smolik as he, he was flush from the pocket. He runs up in the pocket, and then he gets flat with the line of scrimmage. He runs down the line of scrimmage instead of crossing it to throw that pass, and that's what that's what you get taught to do, and he, he executed. All right, Dowling with its five receiver set, no tailback or tight end, back to throw Smolik, fires out. Cooper Nicholson is hit right at the first down marker. He picks up the first down on the other side of the 30, and it'll be, that'll stop the clock with 63 seconds. They're going to hurry up here and get on the ball as uh, you, you teach a receiver to run to the stick, and he did a yard past it, and uh, Jackson makes the completion, and here we go on first down. Seven-yard catch for Cooper Nicholson, five receiver set, back to throw. Is Smolik, he fires it out, and it's caught by the slot receiver, Cooper Nicholson, and he gets across the 35 up near the 38, maybe the 39-yard line, gain of eight. 
Well, again, another one of those quick screens out there. You have that lineman are all screaming out there at the at the defenders and Cooper Nicholson coming back across the green. Second and two, 35 seconds left to go. Dowling with two timeouts, and now Smolik dances out of the pocket, rolls to his left, stops, fires it out, and it's caught by the Dowling tight end, Jalen Thompson, but he stayed in bounds. That'll stop the clock momentarily for the first down. And uh, you know, Jalen knew he made a mistake when he got down on a knee to catch yeah. that ball, and he's down automatically. Can't get out of bounds. And that'll uh, stop the clock. Matter of fact, timeout called by the Maroons. So we'll keep it here. 27 seconds left to go in the first half. 21-12, Dowling with the lead over Johnson. You're listening to tonight's game on the simulcast, Iowa Catholic Radio, and CISN.TV. Mark Amadell alongside the coach and principal, Matt Mandering, on homecoming and Athletic Hall of Fame inductees. We're going to talk pancakes at halftime. Carolyn Kirkhoff is here, and we may have a special Hall of Fame guest who may or may not have played yeah. a little bit of uh, levels of football above high school. And John Scheider, you're on the Dowling sideline. Give us an update and uh, maybe one of the questions or two for our listeners and viewers. You're going to ask Coach Wilson at halftime, Johnny. Well, it just is kind of how it just it how the ball game can change so quickly because you have the momentum and everything's going right and you, you come off a, a a turnover, then next thing you know, you, you give up nine points in less than three minutes and, and, and the ball game has changed dramatically. Yeah, that's uh, that's tonight's game, no question about it. A big district game, week six. Back to throw is Smolik out of the Dowling timeout. It's first and ten. Smolik will keep it and he slides forward. They're going to spot him down right about the forty-nine. It looks like gain of five. In at five, but that that scramble caught, that scramble takes some time right there. And Dowling has one timeout left, 12 seconds on the clock. They're going to get two plays here, hopefully before the half, and try to get into field goal position. And it's a five uh, receiver set. Smolik bounces out of a they're called of the grass. timeout. They're going to call the timeout. And Dowling's going to burn a timeout here as the pass was caught downfield by Michael Reichardt into uh, Johnston territory at 43. You give Johnston credit because they've been able to prevent the deep ball from going down the field and uh, it's uh, that coverage and making small like roll up short and enough for a first down. Well, can we go to the guests in the booth? I know we don't have we a can TV. We can help call the last three seconds. Uh, yeah. I know. <laughs> he remembers this. We did a few interviews on the field with this gentleman and our, our, our special guest is uh, Rico Gafford and Rico, congratulations. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate Going into the Hall of Fame at Dowling, yes, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a blessing. Honestly, it's a blessing. So all I can say, really, to be here where I am, you know, to be around this community and to be inducted into an amazing Hall of Fame and, you know, continue to be able to represent Dowling Catholic, man. That's all I'm here for. Well, you did. You were uh, at the school, played. Uh, you were a two-way player. You yes, did sir. that in college. And, well, you started two levels of college. Yes, sir. The JUCO, and you moved your way over to out west to Wyoming. Yep, yep, yep. And then all of a sudden, you played for my favorite team. Now, we've got Packer fans around here, Rico, <laughs> yeah, but nice, you played nice. for the Raiders, and I'm a big Raider <laughs> fan, and they all know it. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm a green and gold guy. Yeah. So, yeah. But, uh, what a career. We're going to talk more about it. You're going to hang around for halftime, but uh, – now we've got back-to-back -back timeouts, and uh, Rico, three seconds left, and not a whole lot uh, going to happen. I just kick it to you and let you make something happen. <laughs> Remember those man, days? I'm out here reminiscing right now, and I wish I can get back out there. I miss those days a lot, man. Give us uh, some memories at Dowling that you had, because I remember you came from uh, Des Moines East. You yes, transferred, sir. and I know there's a story behind that, but mm -hmm. you wanted to come and play for Dowling. What was the, mm -hmm. what was the reason? Honestly, to be completely honest, I you know, I've – come out and, and told this story a few times now because you know I really I, I want to get back to the community I want to be here I want to be a face in the community all over the entire state and um, you know my, my freshman and sophomore year weren't really good years for me academically and so um, I had a one on one with Paul Rhodes who was the Iowa State head coach at the time when I was on my way up to college and um, he came into and I had a meeting with him when I was at East High School and he told me straight up he was like look if you want to play Division One football, you're going to have to transfer. Your grades are too bad over here. And, you know. Hold that thought. As Smolik, final play of the first oh. half. Smolik back to throw from midfield. Launches wow. the ball in the end zones. And he throws it into a crowd. And the pass is intercepted by Johnson to end the first half. Maroons leading 21-12. to 12. So go ahead and continue that, uh, Rico, before we go to break. Yeah, so, um, like I said, I had the meeting with Paul Rhodes, and he, you know, he told me straight up. He was very transparent with me. He said, you know, if you want to play Division One football, you're going to have to transfer. And, you know, as soon as he told me that, that, I knew what my dream was, and I knew what I wanted to do for a living. So, you know, I, I had to do what I had to do, and 
you know, I burned a lot of bridges and all that type of stuff. But ultimately, I was focused on my career and what I wanted to do. All right, let's go down to Coach Wilson uh, with, head, with head coach Tom Wilson and John Chider with him. Johnny? Coach, you can see how things just changed so quickly. You're up 7-0, and then you got an interception, then two, and then nine points. And the ball game just changed dramatically, and then the tempo goes back your way. But so far, your thoughts on the first half? Well, it's a good game so far. I mean, uh, we've just got to keep going offensively. I think defensively, we need to, to play a little bit better. He's got good escapability, um, but uh, I think that we can change some things up, hopefully take their strengths away. Thank you so much, Coach. All right. John Chato with uh, head coach Tom Wilson at Dowling Catholic. The Maroons with the lead at halftime on homecoming. Dowling leading 21-12. to We'll continue our conversation with Rico Gafford following this break. We'll take a two-minute break along the Iowa Catholic Network line and CISN. Mark Amadale, Matt Mandring, John Chido, and we'll continue with our guests at halftime, Rico Gafford, newly inductee of the Dowling Catholic Hall of Fame, and Carolyn Kirkhoff will talk pancakes, so we'll split the halftime up after these messages here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and it's going to be an interesting patio furniture season this year. We have ordered a ton of merchandise, but due to supply chain issues, it's coming in a truckload at a time all summer long. If you want the best patio furniture, check early and check often. If you want to custom order your furniture, get in here as soon as you can to give your furniture the best chance to arrive this summer. Fireplace Superstore, Iowa's best patio furniture selection, just east of I-35 on Douglas Avenue. Not all used vehicles are created equal. DRM and certified used vehicles have a big advantage. What sets us apart is that all used vehicles receive a 175 point inspection. Carfax report, two oil changes, collision deductible coverage, and wheel dent and windshield repair. Also, all DRM and certified come with two warranties. A one year, 12,000 mile bumper to bumper, and a two year, 100,000 mile powertrain. DRM and Ford Indianola, DRM and Automotive Knoxville, DRM and Auto.com. Do you know what the best part about being a dog is? You can hear disaster before it even happens. You know what they say about disaster. Sometimes it can inspire a symphony. An honest day's work deserves an honest day's treat. No extra charge. And that is why we choose honest wrenches. No extra charge. And it's how service should. Halftime here at Valley Stadium in West Des Moines alongside Matt Maynard. I'm Mark Amadil. The gentleman in the middle, Rico Gafford, newly inductee of the Dowling Catholic Hall of Fame. Rico, you were telling us your story a little bit earlier uh, about uh, transferring from one school to go to Dowling, mm -hmm. and it was about uh, excelling in the classroom first yes. before the field second. Uh, continue that. Absolutely. And that, like I said, that's what it, that's what it was mainly about. Um, you know, honestly, being able to pay, being able to play for the Dowling Catholic Maroons, and you know, having the ending to a career that I had was amazing for me and you know I met a lot of guys and created a lot of friends and a lot of friendships that'll last forever and obviously I have a lot of you know stories to tell and you know I'm making history now with being inducted into the Hall of Fame so it's great for me to, you know and I'm, and I'm glad to be here. Well we're glad to have you here I know Mr. Mainering wasn't your principal at the time mm -hmm. but uh, you know he's a big fan even though he's a Packer fan yeah. he's a big fan so Rico you, you graduated Dowling went to junior college you're, yeah. you're you wanted to play at the next level mm -hmm. and you kept doing that yeah. you kept playing yeah. at different levels yeah. Iowa Western and Council Bluffs yes, and then uh, 
uh, Wyoming took a look at you, you played for them, yeah. and then you made it to the next level, and now on the taxi squad, at last last report you are on the taxi squad, yeah. but you made it for the, with the Raiders, and I saw that great touchdown catch yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. by the Raiders when you are playing uh, back in Oakland. Oh, yeah. that Like I said, you know, it's just it's been a journey. It's been a journey, and you know, I have really felt like I've reached every level. I've touched, I've touched every level and been able to, you know, just grow throughout the entire process, and, you know, going from junior college, to Wyoming was huge for me, you know, it, it, it helped me, you know, understand really where I needed to be and what I needed to do to actually get to the Division One level. And then after going from the Division One level, playing against, you know, I wouldn't say some Power Five schools, but, you know, I got to play against Nebraska. I got to play against Oregon and a few other teams and was able to, you know, really see what it took in order for me to get to that level to play against those guys and then ultimately get into the NFL. So uh, getting to the NFL, you know, I battled a lot of position change, whether they want me on the offensive side or the defensive side. And really, I, you know, I've just done my best throughout it all, and I'm just training and, and then putting in all the effort that I have to to be able to show these guys that, you know, whatever position you want me to play, I can play that. And, you know, ultimately sometimes it comes down to injuries and all that type of sure. stuff or, you know, different decisions that are made or, you know, errors that happen during the week. So um, I'm blessed, you know, to have experienced what I've experienced. Uh, right now I'm a free agent trying to, you know, get back to work. So, yeah, I'm ready. Our halftime score, Dowling 21, Johnston 12, Mark Amadil, Matt Mandring, and Rico Gafford, one of the newly inductees of the Dowling Catholic Hall of Fame. Matt, you got a question for I, the – I just appreciate your tenacity. You know, I, yeah. I think that's the that's a word that I hear over and over again that gets connected to you yeah. and about um, that grind. Oh, Can yeah. you talk about that grind a little bit? You know, what's it like going from that, you know, that D1 level, mm -hmm. playing at Wyoming, to that next level? Because mm -hmm. not many people get that opportunity. Right. You've had that opportunity, and what's that like? I mean, it's, 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 it's about, honestly, battling adversity over time and just, you know, having a fight in you and just wanting to – ultimately reach the top and just go and go and go as far as you can and, and really you know have my family to you know thank for shaping me into the person that I am today and just my you know wh what I've gone through over the years and like the journey has just really created who I am today and I, the grind will never stop ultimately whatever whatever I'm doing in life I will continue to grind and, and show that you know I can do whatever it is I put my mind to. And what I appreciate is your desire to give back. You know, yeah. I've heard you say that more than once oh, yeah. tonight oh, yeah. already. And, mm -hmm. you know, you've opened up a place downtown. Yeah. And, and you, you've got that thing because you want to be a part mm -hmm. of the community. Talk about that. I love the one in Iowa. Yeah. I love, you know, the people. And I've never had a problem with anyone. Mm -hmm. And I just, me, I, I've, I've learned a lot along the way. I'm only 26 year old, but I've learned a lot. And to be able to give back what, I, what I've learned and be able to, you know, help the, the next kid that wants to be the next Rico Gafford. Be yourself along the way, but you know, learn from my mistakes, and and, and ultimately you'll be able to reach wherever you want to go. That's right. great. Mm -hmm. Rico Gaffer joined us here at halftime. Dowling leading Johnson 21-12. Rico, got to ask you, you: you put roots down the community, but you're still trained to you know make an NFL squad. Oh, yeah. You're on the taxi squad. Give us an update about uh, your progress. Yeah, like really, what happened was you know I, I was banged up a little bit. And, you know, I'm getting a little older. So I, it's a lot of young guys <laughs> out there. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot of young guys out there that are coming from college levels. And, you know, they're just they're, they're really good now. Sure. The competition yeah. is, is, is crazy, and it's getting better year by year. So, um, yeah, I, I'm a free agent right now. And, you know, so like I, I, was, I was banged up a little bit, but I'm healthy now, and I'm ready to go. What was it like playing with uh, Brett Favre this uh, this past uh, fall? But see, oh, look, at the, look at this guy. Right. Brett, Favre. Brett Favre. Brett Favre. Aaron yeah. Rodgers. Well, I mean, Aaron. Brett Favre's team, man. Yeah. Oh, okay. still, yeah. <laughs> No, Aaron Rod, you played for the Packers. And yeah, I'll yeah, tell you, you were on their taxi squad. Mm -hmm. And you almost made the cut, and we saw some exhibition games. I know Matt yeah. was watching. Yeah. yeah. But uh, what an experience. I mean, yeah, you've been was, all over. It was great. And really, I can relate the Packers to Dowling. You know, going from – I've started off at East High School and, you know, in an inner, inner city and all that type of stuff. And then you go to a, a school that's, you know, 99% graduation rate, 99% of the kids go to college. And, you know – the sports are, you know, overpowered and just really, really good and all that type of stuff. And then you go to the NFL and you play for a few teams. And I was on the Raiders and I was on the Broncos. And then just to play with the Packers and then the history that they have behind him right. is, is is really, really, really amazing. So just three, three Des Moines kids.
kids at the same three, time. Exactly, three Des Moines kids, and you know we, we we had a lot of fun out there. You know we yeah. got closer. Obviously, those guys are you know rivals or whatnot, and you know, I played against them a bunch when I was in high school. But you know ultimately we came together and we are close friends now. Yeah, so. I didn't think about that. You all three are about the same oh, age. Yeah, yeah. And Lazard. Yeah, and, we're uh, really close friends. Yeah. Alan and I yeah. hung out this year, this summer a bunch, and you know I got to know him a little bit better, and you know it was a good time. So. Yeah. Great. All right. Great. Well, Rico, congratulations. Yeah. Yes, Dowling Catholic Hall mm -hmm. of Fame. Yeah, congratulations. Yes, sir. Nice to meet you. you we, we, your restaurant is located where? We want to let, let our listeners know. So I have Rico's at Drake. That is located right across the street from Drake University. And I also have Vibes Kitchen and Bar. That is located downtown near the Scotia Gardens. And you got family and friends helping you out. Yes. Congratulations on Dowling Catholic Hall of Fame. Thanks for coming out and visiting no with problem. the principal and I. I love hey, that. Happy to be right. here. Happy right. to be Remember here. the interviews we used to do in the field? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You did a good job Good old that. days. That's right. All right. We'll take a break and come back here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. Thank you. Oh. This is Adam. 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. We are. We are. We are so much more than an energy company. We are connectors, community protectors, and clean energy leaders. We are job creators, friends and neighbors, stewards of your dollars and savings. Yes, we. We. We are so much more. We are the energy behind your everyday. And we are obsessively, relentlessly at your service. I'm off to college. Rats. Hi, Joe the Car Guy with a reminder. Before you send your kids off to school, set up an appointment with Westside Auto. We check everything from tires to belts, fluids, hoses, wipers, and lights. 44 inspection points to help prevent that oh rats moment for your students. Call us today to set up your appointment. We'll have your kids off to school saying, For the best, head... All going on tonight, Dowling leading Johnston 21 to 12 in a very exciting first half. And we're going to talk pancakes with this gal, Carolyn Kirkhoff the events manager at Dowling, and a, a pancake enthusiast, is that right? Yes, and I like to consider myself the CPO at Dowling. The I'm the, CPO. the chief pancake officer, <laughs> self-proclaimed, of course. Well, of course, and I'll tell you what, this is year number what for pancakes at Dowling? 61. 61. I should know that. That's about my age, almost, not quite, but I, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it'll be Sunday, October 23rd, 7.30 until noon, Varied Industries Building at the the Iowa State Fairgrounds in Des Moines on a Sunday morning. You got uh, it. I'll tell you, October 23rd, we're about a month away. We are. We are. Things are moving fast. So it's one of the biggest gatherings Dowlings has throughout the school and calendar year, right? True. That's a lot of people. True. I always thought the football games on Friday night were pretty big, you know, four, right? five, 7,000, something like that. Okay, so we're going to get, like, probably <laughs> around 2,500. We um, had a, a young man last night or last year that had the best service hour job, and he ha ran the clicker for every person that came through. You get service hours for that? He sure did. He sure but did. I could get mine done, Mr. Mandering. Yeah, that's right. You need to get out of jug. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's, that's a Ron Gray issue, but that, that, I'm still working on that. All right, so let's talk about the celebrity flippers. Now, what, what do you mean by celebrity flippers? If, if I'm going to go through and have Ron Gray ruin my pancakes, that's not going to happen. Ron Who Gray is our most experienced and well-seasoned flipper. However, that, we have the fine folks. Mr. Mandarin will better. be there. Now I'm getting better. I'm getting hungry, okay. too. Dr. Ryan is going to be flipping some pancakes. I'm, I'm in. We also have Josh Sinclair who uh, is a recording artist from the class of, I'm going to go with 13. Okay. Uh, he has toured all over um, Iowa or all, all across the country and has uh, music in, that's in syndication on TV. So he's done extremely well. He's just a great guy. And uh, he's this is going to be his first time flipping pancakes. So we're now, ready to welcome Josh. Now, all they have to do is flip pancakes. They're not going to be involved with sausages, which are back this year, sausage links. I'm so excited. Yes. So uh, we have a good friend, Pete Lowe, who is a class of 95, who is going to uh, donate all the sausage this year. He's bringing up his 20-foot-long smoker. We'll have that uh, right on the fairgrounds, and they're going to be making that fresh right there, right to go with your breakfast. Now, I saw on the list here Dowling coaches. Now, let's define that. Which coaches are we talking about that are going to be helping with this? Well, Tom Wilson is a great pancake flipper. I don't know if you know this. I do not. Okay, so he helps out every year. He does a great job. And his uh, partner in crime 
is uh, Andra Meeks. So they they usually tag team together, and they're fabulous. Mm -hmm. So they, they're well, crowd pleasers. Here's a problem I have. You know, I know Mr. Maynard, in all due respect, big Packer fan. I know we just had Rico on, and he's helped. You know, you you know if Rico's around, yeah. he owns a restaurant. He could, he could come out. He could flip some pancakes. Pancake breakfast. I will sign him up. <laughs> there he's right over here. So, but Tom Wilson, huge Chiefs fan, as you know, Rico. Huge Chiefs fan. So, okay, I, I, I get that. Are, we, are they all wearing I Heart or I Heart? I love pancake T-shirts. You know, darling, huh? I just can't give away all the secrets. I can't give away all the secrets. Yeah. I can say, like, the traditional things that you see every year at the pancake breakfast, that's that's going to stay in place, the foundation. So pancakes, sausages, all the good drinks. We've added some extra entertainment this year. Entertainment. Yes, hmm. yes. This is Sunday, October 23rd, folks. Mark your calendars, 730 to noon at the Varied Industries Building at the Iowa State Fairgrounds. All right, entertainment. Let's talk about that. Okay. So my my good friend Steve Holland, he'll have the bands out there. We're having doing a great job out here tonight. They're too. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Uh, the choir may be joining us. We've got to fine tune a couple of things like that. But this year we are adding a cakewalk. A cakewalk. An old school cakewalk. I remember those. Yes. Yes. So we're gonna add that. We've got a giant inflatable bounce house coming in for the little kids uh the cheerleaders oh, will be there not for the adults if you want to you know you I can test asked. you can test drive it for us i'm asking you can test drive it for us <laughs> giant inflatable bounce house yes. all right and then all the maroon clubs and teams and whatever are going to be represented yes uh, throughout the uh, varied industry building as i understand yes. a little bit different layout or about, di yes. about the same or yes. what i i cannot leave well enough alone so we have <laughs> we have kind of turned around the layout a little bit it's going to definitely look a little different um volleyball team will be joining us we have choir coming out um a new club this year at dowling is the fashion club they will be represented um core group will be there we also have invited all of our uh, parochial schools to come join us. So look for our friends from okay. uh, Christ the King and St. Luke's. A number of schools are coming out. Plus, uh, we have some colleges and universities that will be present. So if you're thinking about going to a college, you may stop by those booths to get a little information. Well, I'm not, but my daughter might be. If she can get out of high school, maybe. You know, she just started. Well, you know, she just started. It's, it's the journey. Right. It's year one. All exactly. Right. Carolyn Kirkhoff joins us. She is in charge of the pancake breakfast at Dowling Catholic High School. Mark Hamadale here at halftime. Dowling leading 21-12 to 12 over Johnson. Very exciting football game. But back to pancakes. All right, Carolyn, what are we missing here? You mentioned uh, representatives from different universities, but... There's going to be some photo ops going on, too. Yes, I'm so excited. So we do have some special guests coming in. We have uh, the pancake person, and we have the pan the bacon person coming in, the costumes. But we have two new friends coming in, the oh. condiments of butter and syrup. <laughs> so um, we will have a Butter and syrup. <laughs> I mean, what else? What are you going to do with your pancakes? They're going I to use butter and syrup there on you mine, go. as you can tell, yeah. <laughs> so we'll have a backdrop <laughs> up there. So... Um, the alumni, come on in, get your, maybe if you have a class reunion coming together, get your picture taken. You don't okay. have to have the sausage and bacon in there, uh, but we'll have our backdrop. Um, you know, future Maroons should get their pictures taken. Sure. Get ready to go. Absolutely. But you can't go without a ticket. Yeah, you got to have a ticket, but also the campus store we're gonna, is going to be there, right? Deb Deary has stocked up. She is thought. ready to go. She's got a little bit of something for everybody out there. Great. From the Littles. Bigs. So all the spirit wear, and of course we're thinking down the road, holidays coming up, mm -hmm. Christmas, stocking stuffers, etc. Yes. All right. Now, how do we get a ticket? Now, tickets, uh, you, you just don't give them away. The, the students are very much involved. This is a pretty good contest. Been going on since when I was there. Uh, you, you know, get a skip day maybe for a class. But talk about how this Ooh, works. It's with tickets. We've got a big incentive for the kids this year. So you can purchase your tickets online at DowlingCatholic.org. You can get a sheet of eight tickets for $64, okay. $8 a piece. Starting tomorrow, you can buy individual tickets, and those will be $10 a piece. So if you'd like to get more bang for your buck, you can go ahead and get the um, the sheet for eight. Okay, and that that is going to DowlingCatholic.org. You can go on there and look. Yes. And now the... Uh, the uh, the tickets, uh, the student, faculty, and staff will earn an extra day of spring break if they reach their sales goal, yes. which is? 
550 sheets or the equivalent of okay. that. So mm -hmm. we are about 70% of the goal. That's pretty good. We're, a month we're, out. We're a month out, so we've got a little work to do. So I invite all of our friends and alumni and um, Maroon fans to come out and get a ticket and stop by. We'd love to have everybody. And um, the date is Monday, March 20th. We get an extra day of spring, spring break. break. Yeah. Extra okay. day of spring break. So we're looking forward to that. All right. Sausage, yogurt, breakfast beverages, bake sale. The, the bounce house, everything is going to be happening. Yep, the bake sale is back. We um, we kind of went away from that after COVID, but yeah. it's back this year. So we have a lot of um, area restaurants that are donating some great pastries and baked goods, as well as um, uh, some friends that will be dropping things off. So uh, if you'd like to make your signature cookies or cupcakes, feel free. We will take them. Uh, secret family recipe. Yes, yeah. and you know that service hours for the kids too. The other thing with the pancake breakfast, to make it sizzle, as I like to say, <laughs> we need about 400 volunteers to make it work. Well, you know I'm one of them. The, the, the lady over there to, behind Mr. Maynard, my wife, she'll be the other, and we'll, we're certainly going to volunteer. I know. You're going to be in the front row. You are in the celebrity. You are a Hall of Famer, Well, like Rico Gafford. That, <laughs> that is true. But I First of all, I'm just trying to get my jug served, so I'm just hoping I can maybe work off some of those hours. And maybe Mr. Gray will notice. Right. I'm just trying to do that. Maybe right. Mr. Maynard can help you with your jug. Well, he has been. He's been very good with that. So Carolyn Kirkhoff is our guest here at halftime, amongst others, Hall of Fame night as Dowling leads Johnson. Any final comments before we uh, swing to a commercial and get back to football, Carolyn? Thanks for all you do behind the scenes. What a production it always is. It is so fun. And I don't tell anybody. This is just between me and you. Okay. But I have the best job. It is so fun. I get to work with all the parents, the alumni, and we have some fabulous sponsors this year. Again, Global Direct Mail is our um, lead sponsor. We like to call them the um, full stack. They're the full stack sponsor, but we have a lot of good good people in this in this community that have supported this for a long time, so we are very blessed. All right. Carolyn, thanks for joining us here at thanks halftime. Thanks for having me. We'll see you at the Pancake Breakfast. Okay, I'll be there. That'll be Sunday, October 23rd, Varied Industries Building, 730 to noon at the Iowa State Fairgrounds. Back after this, time out on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISM. We have 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. I'm off to college. <laughs> Rats. Hi, Joe the Car Guy with a reminder. Before you send your kids off to school, set up an appointment with Westside Auto. We check everything from tires to belts, fluids, hoses, wipers, and lights. 44 inspection points to help prevent that oh rats moment for your students. Call us today to set up your appointment. We'll have your kids off to school saying, For the best, head west. Westside West Auto. Auto. Free Godfather's Pizza. Begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Valley Stadium in West Des Moines alongside Matt Maynard, Mark Hamadil, John Chido is alongside. John, let's go down to you before the second half kickoff. Dowling will kick off and defend the south end zone, while Johnson will receive and defend the north end zone. Your thoughts? During this halftime break, we were busy up here, as you probably heard. Yeah, Olympian, NFL player, <laughs> Caitlin Clark. It, it's always exciting around Dallin Catholic. Well, it is, Johnny. It is. That's you know? fantastic. And uh, I want to thank my booking agents, Mr. Matt Mandering. And uh, who else helped you with Jared, it? Jared Herring. Mr. You know, Herring. Hey, Mr. Herring yep. came through as a, in his AD role and helped us out. So that's, that's how we got the professional football player on, Johnny. And then Caitlin Clark. Her parents are just awesome, as you yes, know. Yes. So, all right, what's, what's your thoughts, Coach, as we kick off? Dowling kicks off, rather, as uh, booting away is Marty Blount, and it's a directional oh. kick, and falling right at the eight-yard line, and I think he just kind of missed it, you know, missed you know, I, took I the, the, the kickoff with I, Tatum Fox. I don't know if the young man plays baseball, but I think he just got nervous and went down to a knee to make sure that ball didn't get by him right. and then realized I can't get back up. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, the ball gets down to the seven-yard line, eight-yard line, and, and Johnson's going to start in a hole. 
Johnston was impressive offensively in that first half. They did some things that I didn't think that they could do. And, uh, you know, Sh Sean Strand had a heck of a half. Yes, he did. And uh, th those some big numbers on first down from the uh, eight-yard line. Johnston starts deep in their own territory, and they give it to to their tailback, who uh, got a lot of work, Blake Tubbs, and he got a few yards, tried to turn the corner, and uh, they're going to put him down right about the 10, and move the 12-yard line, gain of four, second and six. Just one score coming out of half, I think Ankeny Centennial's up on Urbandale, 20 to 16 in the, I believe that was the right score. Uh, now it, yeah, we should now have it a, jumped on me here. We should have a load of scores here, and we'll pass them along. I know uh, get that through our CIN, CISN folks. So I want to thank Randy Nielsen. Back to throw is Nuss, rolls to his right, and finally run out of bounds. And back at the 10, 11 yard line before he's uh, knocked down. A nice job of chasing him was Cody Hikus that time, Matt. Hikus and Hagen. The, the young man, Nuss, is fast. He's a really good athlete, and he is quick. And they got those two big guys chasing him, and they couldn't get him. But, uh, again, they made him throw on the run, throws it down to the ground as he runs out of bounds. I, one, one score from half is Valley and Ankeny are tied 21 at the half. All right, Roosevelt leading north, 20-16, to 16, the battle for the uh, Central Iowa Des Moines, or the Des Moines City Championship. And it looks like Waukee took the lead, 17-14. And back to throw is Nuss. He overthrows the intended receiver on third and long, incomplete, and they went for uh, the big guy, Simpson, and down the far sideline, incomplete. Johnny talked about before the game, Dowling sitting in that cover two zone look, and, and they had help over the top, and they had great coverage on that play and would have taken a perfect pass to get in there, and they almost connected, but it was a good, good defense there by the Maroons. So it brings up fourth down for Johnston, fourth and six from their own 12-yard line. Dowling leading 21 to 12 here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN as we simulcast our radio broadcast with their live stream broadcast. Here's the punt by Johnston and Will Saffers from his own end zone on the uh, hop. It's taken by Dowling Catholic on the return. That is Cooper Nicholson, and he gets across the 40 down into a Johnston territory at the 36-yard line. Maroons are going to have excellent field position here, Matt. With 11 minutes to go, third quarter, Dowling up 21 to 12. Dragons have scored on a touchdown, a field goal, and a safety in the first half. Let's go down to John Chido and a good defensive stand that time by the Maroon uh, defense, Johnny. Yeah, it really was. It started up front with the, the three down linemen with Hikus and Hagen and, and Rumley, uh, putting pressure on Nuss, Nuss, making him break the pocket and throw the ball later when he wanted to and on the run. And you got to credit Cody Hikus. Uh, on that third or that second down play, and then, like Matt said, the help over the top with the nice coverage there. Yeah, it certainly was, and you know, staying away from the personal foul penalty as he tried to chase Nuss out of bounds. Now Smolik back to throw, looks downfield, got a man open. That's Trey Wilson, but he led him too far, incomplete at about the 10 yard line. And boy, he just didn't get a chance to get his, his feet set, uh, did Smolik. But Trey running a nice route similar to his touchdown route last Friday night in uh, Council Bluffs. It was a good good call there, Mark, as he was coming from the from the left side, the wide side of the field all the way across formation, and Smolik had had shifted back that way and caught a glimpse of him late, and, and as you said, didn't quite get his feet set to throw the yard target pass. We're going to bring up second down 10 for the Maroons. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Skeffington's Formal Wear. Provides tuxedo suits and casual groom attire for weddings, proms, and other special occasions. Skeffington's Formal Wear with five locations in Des Moines. West Des Moines, Ankeny, Coralville, and Davenport. 515-283-0463. Matt? And I missed it. Johnny would have to help us with the penalty on the play, so it's first and 15 Yeah, now. I see they moved them back. Dowling back uh, to the 41. Back to throw Smolik being chased out of bounds. Fires in the end zone. The pass is tipped away and a penalty flag down incomplete. But a penalty flag down as the ball was underthrown uh, to the receiver that time, Cooper uh, Nicholson, I believe. It was, and... It Cooper Nicholson was starting to come back for the ball and basically just got tackled. And, uh, and and they had coverage over the top. There wasn't a need to do it, but the other defender didn't know the other guy had his back there. And and uh, now they're talking about it here. Well, because the ball, they, I think the ball, the ball was, was tipped. tipped. Yeah, that's exactly right, Johnny. The ball was tipped. Well, then all bets are off. And I think the officials are going to – the official that threw the flag saw the pass interference, and now his, his crew is going to come out and help and say, hey, I think the ball was tipped by the other defender, and this is going to be wiped off as a non, yeah. as a play on. And yeah. they're going to wave the flag off. That's, that's a correct call. 
Dowling fans in front of us don't like it, but that is the right call, as we saw on the replay here, Matt. Watch yeah, it's this. The, it's the timing of the tip, really. You know, does the pass interference take place after the ball is tipped? And that's the play before. Um, but, the you know, if the ball gets tipped, then everything is everything is off. You can tackle anybody. You can do anything you right. want. And uh, if the ball is not tipped, um, here's the, the play. pass interference was first. Then it would still be pass interference. So. Yeah, now here's the throw by Smolik, and yeah, it's yeah, tipped, and then there's, there's interference. So yeah, it was si- almost simultaneous. simultaneous. Yep. Yep. All right, now it's second and 15, Dowling from the Johnston 41. The Maroons up 21 to 12 in the handoff, and getting back well, near the original line of scrimmage is the Dowling tailback, Rashad Davis is in there. He and uh, C.J. Phillip have interchanged at that running back spot, and Davis Get some of that penalty yardage back, but it'll bring up third and 11 for Dowling at the 37-yard line of Johnston. You know, with all the action we had at halftime, we didn't get the halftime stats. I saw Coach Seifert walk through here. Yeah, we, we, didn't, we didn't have time. But, you know, I, the Dowling offense didn't get a ton of run yards, but when they needed them, they got them. And so here they are in the third and long. All right, three receivers to the left, one to the right. Dowling going right to left, south to north in their maroon uniforms. White pants back to throw. Smolik avoids pressure, fires over the middle. He's got a man open. It's Cooper Nicholson, and he drops oh. the football as he hits the ground incomplete. Had it and dropped it at the 10. That was the highlight reel catch if he'd have hung on to it. The young man drove, dove, and uh, Smolik had him and dove and, and outstretched and had the ball in his hands, but it's so hard to control that football as you hit the turf. Smolik did a nice job of getting the pass over yeah. the, uh, I think it was the cornerback there, Colin, uh, Colin Hodap, number 23, and uh, that, that's where it was elevated. So it'll bring up fourth and 11 and punting team out for Dowling. That's Cooper Nicholson, who was the intended receiver, and Dowling will apparent punt. Cooper gets a good snap, high kick, angles it to the far sideline, fair catch signal for it to 15 by Johnson, and uh, it'll be Johnson Dragon football, first and 10 from right around their own 15-yard line with 9.48 remaining here in the third quarter on a beautiful night of high school football, week six. Uh, the score is Dowling 21, Johnston 12. Mark Amadale, Matt Mandring. Let's go down to the sidelines, and that is where John Chida was at. And, Johnny, give us an update. Uh, good defense that time by the uh, Johnston Dragons, and we've seen that here. Uh, like the game started with good defense, and both teams now have come out, have, have stopped the offense. Yeah, it's been uh, uh, back and forth. I was thinking the same thing. This game yeah, started, the game second started. half, just the same way the first half started. And so now we'll see as these offenses get ready to go. All right, Dragons first down from their own 14 yard line. And here is Nuss back to throw and oh. fires it out, and it's incomplete. Just missed on that pass. As he had his big tight end that time, Simpson open, and Jacob Simpson, all 6'5", 220 pound junior, was intended receiver. Nick Frerich made a heck of a play over the middle. That ball, Tatum Fox was coming across the middle, and, and Nick Frerich lays out, tips the ball, and uh, gets it deflected and almost intercepted. All right, bring up second and 10. Dragons from their own 14, and now they. Give it to Tubbs, and he's near a first down. Ran over the right side and followed the blocking of R.J. Jordan, the center. Alex Flores, the right guard, and Jay Musin is the right tackle for the Dragons, and he's about a yard shy of the first down, up to about the 23-yard line. They'll spot it, gain a nine there, Matt. Justice Williams comes up and makes the hit right before the first down, and a good run there by uh, by Tubbs as, as they make the third and short here. Give themselves a, a little better option here on third down. And they'll send two receivers to the left, one to the right. Tailback Tubbs will move to the right side of quarterback Will Nuss, six foot, 170 pound sophomore. Nuss on the read option, gives it to Tubbs. He can't turn the corner. Stopped in his tracks, penalty flag down. And it'll be shy of the first down and we'll see what the penalty's about, uh, Matt. Threw the flag right in the pile. He did not get the first down by the run, so we'll see what the call is. Uh, face mask. Face mask Dowling. So they will get the first down. Yes, they will by penalty and a first down for Johnson. That's 15 yards. Both teams have had a face mask tonight. Uh, Johnson committed that foul in the first half. And Dowling reciprocates here in the second half. And will move the ball up to the 28-yard line. First down, Dragons. Via the penalty on Dowling Catholic. 8.45 remaining third quarter. I think Rico Gafford. 
newest inductee of the Dallin Catholic Hall of Fame. We'll go through the list of inductees tonight. Back to throw is Nuss. Fires the ball down. Philly's got a man open. And that is caught by Tatum Fox. Touchdown, Johnston. From 72 yards out, Fox with the catch right over the top. And, boy, that was a pitcher-perfect pass from uh, right. the, the, the third baseman on the Johnson yeah, baseball he, team and now quarterback Will Mess. He's standing on the 20-yard line, and he throws that ball to the other 30, and Tatum Fox steps out and catches that ball right in his fingertips, and, and a great play there for the Johnson Dragons. The Dragons have cut the Dowling lead to three, pending the extra point with 8.30 remaining here in the third quarter. Tatum Fox on a 72-yard touchdown reception from quarterback Will Nuss. And the extra point is up and good. It's a two-point game. 21-19. Dowling with the lead over Johnston. Eight and a half minutes left to go third quarter. Back in one minute here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. Free Godfather's Pizza. Begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Do you know what the best part about being a dog is? You can hear disaster before it even happens. You know what they say about disaster. Sometimes it can inspire a symphony. An honest day's work deserves an honest day's treat. No extra charge. And that is why we choose Honest Wrenches. No extra charge. And it's how service should be. Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Valley Stadium on Dowling's homecoming and Athletic Hall of Fame night. Johnson has cut the lead to two, 21-19 on Will Ness's 72-yard touchdown pass to Tatum Fox. Carson Hansen's extra point and gives the uh, Maroons a two-point lead. Now on the return, Dowling makes a Jake Anderson on the return. Gets it across the 30. He's up near the 35, maybe the 36-yard line, so good field position, but... About Johnson, they strike four plays, 86 yards on their second possession of the second half. And John Chidel, the uh, Dragons now have cut the Dowling lead to two. Yeah, they sure have. And I don't know if you guys saw the replay or not, but it looked like from my angle it was kind of like an alarm where you had a had a had a screen and a in a in a go by the number two receiver. And and I, I think they just both both defensive backs kind of peeked into that that screen play and, and let that receiver run run over the top, but. Uh, well set up. Better look on that uh, instant yeah. replay. Yeah, well set up by uh, Coach Brian Woodley, 21st year at Johnston. And he's got his team within two points of Dowling. The Maroons with the first down at their own 36-yard line. Jackson Smolix went the distance quarterback. He gives it to C.J. Phillips, spins out of a tackle, and bowls his way across the 40 up near the 41 or 2-yard line for a gain of five. It'll bring up second down and five for Dowling. And the Maroons have been... You know, grinding yardage when they put it on the ground, uh, Matt. They're they're averaging about four or five yards a carry. They uh, they are doing a really good job on the ground, and that was a good strong run by CJ right there and, and over that right side. And uh, again, outside of Nahas and and uh, got around the edge and broke the one tackle. Had the alley, found it, and got the five yard gain. Second and five, Dowling, 7.40 left to go here in the third quarter. Game clock is running. They send a man in motion, and that's Rashad Davis. And he gets the pass out of the backfield. It's actually a lateral pass. Davis cutting and uh, angling forward, but a lot of east-west running. Couldn't turn it upfield, and he's tackled right at the line of scrimmage for no game. Jared Klon there for the Dragons makes the stop, and you're exactly right, Mark, is he didn't see anything up close and kept sliding down the line of scrimmage trying to find a little little gap to get up into, and he couldn't. Johnson defense rallied and uh, got the stop. Big third down here for the Maroons. Yeah, it certainly is. Down with two receivers to the left, three to the right, empty backfield, no tight end. Here's Smolik out of the shotgun. Here's the snap. Steps back, two-step drop, fires it out. Pass is caught 
spike. Dowling's Bo Gamble, and he gets out of bounds, and he's got the first down at midfield, a gain of nine. Big play for the Maroons, and Smolik just stands back there, cool and collected, and puts it right on the right on the one-two of Gamble's chest, and and on that quick out, and he's running it right to sticks. Great play for the Maroons. And you're exactly right. You watched the replay on CISN. That is a bullet, and that is right on the numbers. Tough play. You got to have arm strength for that pass. You man. do. Even though it's through the short side of the field, he gets it out quick and puts it right on target, and uh, just a nice throw. Nice throw there by Smolik and a right. nice catch. First down Dowling at midfield, and the give is to the uh, tailback, and that's C.J. Phil. Oh, he had one man to beat, and he finally stacked up at about the 48 of Johnson. Gained it two, but there was nobody behind that tackler, Matt. If he could have slipped out of that, it was a foot race to the end zone it with the was. safety. It, you're exactly right, Mark. I mean, it was. they had things walled walled up there and CJ just needed to miss one guy and, and, and fortunately for Johnson he was able to make the stop. Dowling scored tonight. Cooper Nicholson on a seven yard reception to get things going for Dowling from Smollett back in the first quarter. Davis on a 13 yard run. Rashad with his first touchdown tonight. CJ Phillip on a 16 yard run and then Johnson's answered with the safety and we'll recap their scoring and now here's an inside handoff and this time running to the right side is Phillip. He's finally Dragged down from behind, right around the 36-yard line of uh, or 46-yard line of Johnson, gain it two, and recapping scoring for the Dragons, they got the safety to cut the Dowling lead to seven to two, and then Strand on a 14-yard touchdown pass from Nuss, field goal by Carson Hansen of the Dragons, and then Tatum Fox 72-yard touchdown reception. So Will Nuss has thrown two touchdowns tonight. The young sophomore having a pretty good night. Another big third-down play here for the Maroons as they look at a third and seven. All right, three receivers left, one to the right. Back to throw is Smolik. Steps up in the pocket, fires downfield. The pass is tipped away and incomplete. He had two receivers in the same area, and it was knocked away at the last moment. And Dowling's punting unit will come in as C.J. Phillip was the original intended receiver. He was the under, uh, ran the under pattern, Matt. One thing is the Dowling team comes out to punt is every punter kick they make tonight in this season for both teams, the Runes and Dragons, will raise funds for the count. Count the Kicks, a stillbirth prevention campaign that teaches expecting parents to pay attention to the baby's movements during pregnancy. Count the Kicks has saved babies in 30 states. Big, big thing there. And you can call in and, and uh, pay attention and, and donate to what they are doing in that cause. All right, beautiful punt by Cooper Nicholson. is going to be down inside the 10, right around the 6-yard line. The deep back for uh, Johnson let the ball roll and that was Tatum Fox and that will be uh, first and ten Johnson from their own six yard line. So the Maroons on the uh, special teams uh, push the Dragons back with 521 to go here in the third quarter. Johnson trails Dowling. It's 21-19. Maroons with the lead. Let's go down to the Dowling sideline. That's where John Chido has been tonight. Johnny, what would you take out of that? Dowling offense uh, couldn't get a much needed first down after crossing midfield. Yeah, it, the, the offensive linemen, if they can get to the second level and get that one extra guy accounted for on the Johnson defense, there's some open running lanes for, for Davis and TJ, but they're not able to get to that second level. And Johnson's doing a nice job sitting back with that two-safety look and keeping everything in front of him. All right, Ness from his own end zone and throws the ball away incomplete. Heads up, Johnny. That was right around where uh, you were at. And it will bring up second and ten. Dragons from their own six-yard line here, Matt, and uh, this have, is where it gets tough. Have your field position. Swivel right there. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's good hand-eye IQ. <laughs> That's not what I heard. In what goes on in practice? I mean, the guy comes in the office limping in, on certain I know, days. But he's he's got that. He's getting that bowling thing down. That's that hand. And that's that, <laughs> that IQ there. Oh yes, don't forget. Let us forget that. Yeah. Uh, bowling before the game tonight uh, with his uh, beautiful bride. And I can't wait to hear this. Handoff goes to the tailback for the Dragons, and going nowhere is Proctor's. Check that as Tubbs, and he's hit and drop. It'll actually be a loss as that, that front three of Hagen, Rumley, and Heikas get some penetration there and stop that up at the line of scrimmage. And so it's a loss of three, I believe. Is that a loss of two? Uh, so it was at the six. Yeah, it was at the six yard line. So he loses two yards back to the four, does Tubbs. So big third down here. It's, you look, you can look for Hagen, Rumley, and and Heikas to pin their ears back. Well, this is where Johnson went over the top with the quarterback Nuss, and now Nuss in the read option gives it to uh, Tubbs, and he's tackled right at the six yard line, so he gets the two yards he lost the previous play back. That'll bring up fourth down and ten for the Dragons. Yeah, Woodley, Coach Woodley plays a little conservative right there and hands it off to Tubbs off the off tackle left side, and Wanick 
scraped from his middle linebacker position right off the edge and, and uh, stops Tubbs at the line of scrimmage. Clock approaching the four minute mark. Dowling leading 21 19 as we approach the four minute mark of the third quarter. Other games going on tonight. Valley is at third ranked Ankeny. Fourth ranked Southeast Polk at Linmar of Marion. Ankeny Centennial at Urbandale. That's a top 10 matchup, number eight versus number six. As here is the punt by the uh, Dragons, Will Saffers from his own end zone, fielded by Dowling. And that's uh, Trey Wilson with it inside the 30, still on his feet, and a penalty flag down at the 27 yard line. And Trey still on his feet, and they're going to whistle him down at the 23 yard line, but a penalty flag back at the 27. We'll see what this is all about, Matt. Well, you, you got to believe in the punt. I, I don't see the flag. Oh, there it is. Okay. It's most likely a hold. And they'll get that all sorted out. Other games tonight, we have Ankeny Centennial, eighth ranked at number six, Urbandale. Try to get your scores on that. I got a 28-16 score, Ankeny Centennial over Urbandale in the fourth quarter. It's in the fourth. Valley and Ankeny, I still, the only score I have is a halftime score tied at 21. Okay. And I've got, that's it. Trying to update my sheet here. Yeah. And now they're going to mark, assess the penalty against Dowling. Other games going on. Council Bluffs Lincoln is at Ames tonight. Sioux City North at Waukee. That game's a CISN broadcast. Des Moines Roosevelt at Des Moines North. At the end of the third quarter, Ankeny leads Valley 27-21, but the Tigers are driving. How about that? And uh, Southeast Polk is up on Linmar 35-13. All right, Dowling with the first down at the 37-yard line of Johnston, and uh, they give it to the tailback, and he's hit, hit hand it off, and down at the 35-yard line as Runes put the ball on the ground. And this is uh, this is a tough time of the game right now for both teams. They're going to grind it out, try to Runes are going to try to grind the clock out, but only a two-point lead. Dowling wants to get something out of this possession. You know that's got to be coming. Yeah, you can take advantage of the short field that they had, the nice run back by Trey Wilson, and then, you know, stopped a little bit by the penalty, but still, you start with the ball on the four, on the 37-yard line, you're thinking you've got to get at least three points out of this. All right, Dowling with the second down and eight from the Johnston 35. Three receivers left, one to the right. They keep Rashad Davis in the backfield, a tailback, and Smolik gives it to him. Davis scoots outside the numbers. He's finally tripped up as he falls right on the 30-yard line number on the field and he tried to get outside but he yeah. lost his feet nice hit that time by the dragons who uh, put him down at a 31 they'll spot a gain of four truly was kind of a shoestring tackle there on rashad davis as he slipped to that outside and uh just um it looked it looked like it was steve mccoy or just got enough of him no jared clon clon all right so bring up third and four for the maroons not sure if they're near field goal range for their young sophomore kicker. Three receivers left to the right. Back to throw is Smolik. Fires out. Pass is caught. And a nice catch that time by Dowling Catholic. And a nice reception near a first down is Michael Reichardt. Michael Reichardt gets the first down for the Maroons. And you move the sticks. And that's a long throw. And it is. Giving that cushion. You know, he's thrown from one hash all the way over to the numbers on the other side. Um, to the wide side of the field, and that's a long, strong throw and, and a great catch. And to get five yards. Yeah. He needed five yards for yeah. a first down. Yeah. First down, Dowling at the Johnston 26. The Maroons will go with two tight ends, a receiver on each side of the formation, Rashad Davis at tailback, right behind quarterback. Jackson Smollett gives it to uh, Rashad. Right up the gut he goes, leans forward inside the 20, down to the 19-yard line, and he got a lot of... A lot of yardage that time right up the gut. There was a big crease over there between Max Shelton and Nate Agos as they sealed up that inside, that interior of the line of scrimmage there. And really, uh, George Nahas turned and, and sealed his guy out and created a nice alley there for Rashad. So Davis gains seven, second and three, Dowling at the Johnson 19. We're approaching the final one minute and 15 seconds of the third quarter. Handoff Davis. He goes left. Pushes the pile inside the 15. Down to the 14-yard line. Gain of five. And the Maroons are getting a big push on that pile. There that time it was. You know, as you see the, them get up and you see big Kyle Rockers and Kate Batterton get up off the bottom of the pile with Rashad as he's just hanging on to those, on those two as he moves down the field. Reminder, the Iowa Catholic Radio fundraiser begins this Monday, October 3rd. 
Iowa Catholic Radio is listener-supported, and your tax-deductible gift keeps Iowa Catholic Radio on the air, connecting listeners to Christ. If you want more information, iowacatholicradio.com. Mark Amadale alongside Matt Maindring, John Chido on the Dowling sideline. It's first and 10 Dowling from the 19 of Johnston, and now here is Davis with the ball again. It's a little bit of a seam on the right side and tried to cut back and was finally dropped at about the nine-yard line. Like a couple of maroons were shaking up on the play. A little slow getting up there. Um, it's Max Shelton, Max the center. Max Shelton, yeah. He, tough kid, though. He's going to walk that off a little bit. I think he just kind of gets stepped on there as he um, gets up out of that pile. But Rashad Davis, he's always good to have one person miss. That's that's a mark of a pretty good tailback. Yeah. <laughs> Three receivers to the left for the Maroons. They're bringing an extra tight end. Second and five, Dowling at the Johnston nine-yard line. Here's Jackson Smolik back uh, with the inside handoff, and he gives it in. Touchdown, Dowling. A nice little move that time. Rashad Davis and Smolik sold the pass and hands off inside, and we'll see the replay here as yeah, uh, Randy will get it put, plugged up for us about to, or put up for us. That end got sealed up there, and uh, just a great job by the Maroons as um, Jalen Thompson actually gets a good block out there. And, and, yes, he does. And, and uh, Rocker seals off the side, and Davis finds a home. Rashad scores his second touchdown of the night, this time from nine yards out to go with the 13-yard one, and the extra point is up and good by Marty Blount. So Dowling now. Extends their lead to 28-19, and that was the final play of the third quarter. So we'll come back with the fourth quarter and kickoff in one minute here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. Used vehicles are created equal. DeArmond certified used vehicles have a big advantage. What sets us apart is that all used vehicles receive a 175-point inspection. Carfax report, two oil changes, collision deductible coverage, and wheel dent and windshield repair. Also, all DeArmond certified come with two warranties. A one-year, 12,000-mile bumper-to-bumper and a two-year, 100,000-mile powertrain. DeArmond Ford Indianola, DeArmond Automotive Knoxville, DeArmondAuto.com. Mornings, they can be hectic. Let's go. So can your car, so to get a free pickup, drop-off, or delivery. Head over to Honest Wrenches. And their loaner vehicles? No extra charge. Find your peace of mind with even more wonderful services. Every vehicle that comes in gets a full visual inspection and a five-year, 50,000-mile warranty. No extra charge. Head on over to Honest Wrenches. No extra charge, and it's how service should be. Back here at Valley Stadium, Dowling going six plays, 37 yards on the touchdown. Marty Blount with the extra point. Now he kicks off and is picked up by Johnson and tripped up. Oh, a game <laughs> might be a touchdown saving tackle as Talon Proctor, outstanding point guard on their basketball team at Johnson, nearly ran it back. That uh, play almost backfired on the Maroons, that short kick by um, Blount. And then uh, it ends up being Michael Reichardt. Makes a definite two-string tackle. Yes, he did on and, that replay. Uh, otherwise, he was in the end zone. All right, let's go down to John Chada before this play, and the Maroons now let's see if their defense can hold Johnston as the Dragons, Johnny, have went over the top to find success tonight. Yeah, they, they sure have. They've been have uh, great luck exposing underneath patterns, and then they hit that one over the top, but that's a big score here. We said it was going to be close late in the third quarter, and here we are. All right, back to throw is Nuss. Fires the ball downfield, and the pass is incomplete. He tried to hit his receiver right about midfield, and uh, he couldn't uh, corral him, and that was intended for Adrian Broadus. The backup quarterback was in the mix there, uh, Matt, so they brought in their extra. You know, one person we haven't seen tonight a lot is Rex Woodley. Yeah. They're their leading receiver, and either Dowling's neutralized him or Rex, I haven't seen his number out there much in the – Second he, half. Strand is the one that's been, you know, had the hot hand in the first mm -hmm. half. And, you know, with Nuss, he really is effective when he when he flushes out to his right side and, and he's able to run, and that's his default. He wants to go out to the right side and get that get that ball off. 
All right, second and 10, Johnson from their own 42 back to throw Nuss. He goes over the top and he overthrows everybody. Somebody ran the wrong way, passes incomplete. He had a couple receivers out there. One of them was Sean Strand. He was running the fly route, or rather the post route, and the ball was thrown like for a kind of a, a, a seam flag. route. Yeah, yeah, a flag route. And, and you know, Ferrix was the closest one to the ball. And fortunately for Nuss, he didn't leave that ball up in the air too much, and, and Ferrix didn't have enough time to get underneath it. So here you are in a big third and ten, and, and if you're Johnson, you don't want to give the ball right back to the Maroons at this point. We've got a few scores. We'll try to chime in here. Third and ten, Johnston from the 42 back. The throw is Nuss. The sophomore fires it out, and the pass is, is it caught in bounds? It is right at the first down marker, the 47-yard line of uh, Dowling. What a catch that time by Blake Tubbs, the tailback. Yeah, that was a heck of a catch as he's running out of bounds and was able to get one foot down. That's all you and, need. Yeah, it makes the completion there and a good throw by Nuss. And he did. He had the one foot down. Um, it was Broadus. Broadus, yeah, the backup Broadus. quarterback. Yeah. yeah. I think he's trying to fill that uh, spot that uh, Woodley had. As we have not seen Rex in a while. So it's first down Johnson at the Dowling 46. Broadus with a great catch that time, the six foot, 180 pound junior. And now Broadus with the, again with the, bat, with the football. And he goes around right in and gets across the 40 and gets about six yards on the play. You know, it's kind of like when uh, Cataldo comes in for Dowling, you know, it's there's more of a run option than there is a pass option. Not yeah. that Dante can't throw the football, but it's you're thinking more run. The same thing with Broadus in at that quarterback position. All right, some score updates. Des Moines North leading Roosevelt 22-20 early in the third quarter. Last report, it was Ankeny 27, Valley 24. And that was in the second half. We'll keep you posted when we get him. And now here is a double pass. Double pass. And back to throw is Simpson. He fires it downfield, and the pass is knocked away, and it's incomplete at the last moment. And they really, throw, did they throw a flag on there? Johnston bench is uh, really good. A really good throw uh, play there by Hanton. We got uh, offside on Dowling, I believe they called. That's a late hit. A late hit, okay. On the, on the quarterback, Johnny? Uh, I believe it was the, the, the guy that threw the ball. Uh, yeah. So well, which one? Pass. Yeah, it was, <laughs> the, it was second the second pass. Guy, yeah. And that was the, the tight end, Simpson. Jacob Simpson. Well, the, it didn't look like it was. Uh, I mean, yeah. he was in the air. I, I, that's. And that was a great job by Dowling's yeah. uh, Matthew great, Hanton yeah. to knock it away. Great job by Hanton. But the flag... You know, the, the penalties have hurt the Maroons tonight as far as just keeping things alive and keeping Johnson in the game. And here they are now, first and first at the 25. Back to throw Nuss, and the ball is That's tipped, and off. it's intercepted by intercepted. Dowling. Ball got tipped the line of scrimmage and intercepted. And the Maroons come away with it. How about that? It's well, Hanton. Yeah, Hanton. Matthew Hanton, the guy who broke up the pass yeah. earlier, Matt. And we'll have to look if that was Rumley. Now, Rumley is the tallest guy on the field. We're going to find I, out. I, I, believe he ends up being yes it is Ralston Rumley makes an outstanding play it's just him and and Nuss and he realizes he can't get to him so he just gets his hands up and uh, knocks the ball down Hanton scoops it up and uh, the Bruins are in business well Rumley got great penetration to get that close to knock it down you said he's not that tall Johnny <laughs> that's a big play by the defense they've come up with uh, three turnovers tonight yeah just when Dowling's defense is you know put their back against the wall a little bit with these penalties, self-inflicted penalties. They come up with big plays and to stop this uh, Johnson offense who was clicking there for, for a little bit. Yes, they were. First down, Dowling at their own 18-yard line. And here is a handoff, this time to C.J. Phillip as they interchange tailbacks again between Davis and C.J. And Phillip gets up near, we're going to call it the 22-yard line, gain of four. Nuss, uh, you know, on the year, had only two interceptions coming into this game. And that's his second one tonight should have been his third he actually had a third one called back because of a penalty right and so there's you know it, the dowling defense is doing the job and uh bending and not not breaking too often yeah, he's got 10 touchdowns and four interceptions for the year does the the sophomore nuss second and six dowling from the 22 swing pass to the left side and the pass is incomplete the intended receiver that time was bo gamble let it go through it a little flanker screen set up on the side. Didn't see enough blockers for him, but Bo had a, a blocker in front of him, but he couldn't get the uh, 
yeah, you know, catch on the uh, hands on his on the football. I don't think he would have benefited by catching that football because I don't think he was going anywhere. And uh, you, the the Johnson side was going crazy for a little bit there because they thought it was a backwards pass, but it was definitely a forward yeah, pass. It was not a lateral. Yeah, that's right. All right, so it's third down for Dowling. Third and six for the Maroons on their own 22. Two tight ends and two receivers on each side of the formation. Back to throw is Smolik. Looks left, throws left. Got a man open at Cooper Nicholson. Did an inside pivot, and down the near sideline he goes. Finally wrestled down near midfield. What a yard after the catch move by Cooper <laughs> Nicholson. Did that old basketball inside pivot yeah. and picked up about five yards. He stopped on a dime and uh, let the defender run by him and pivots, and, and he's loose and uh, turns a uh, about a 10-yard gain into a 20-yard gain for the Maroons. We'll give him 26, Coach. 26. Yeah, that's all why right. we have the math guys up that's here, right. you know. That's right. <laughs> Jared Seifert and all those guys. I was just rounding. 20, you rounded <laughs> down. It's up. 26-yard gain for Nicholson on the pass from Smolik. First down Dowling at their own 48. Back to throw is Smolik. No, he gives it to the tailback. C.J. Phillip in the secondary trying to strip the ball, and he's got the first down at the 40 of Johnson. He picked up 12 yards. This is where the Dowling, you know, the Dowling offensive line is going to look to really try to grind it out, finish this drive out, run some time off the clock because there's 9.47 left, which is a lot of time. That's right. But you want to you want to grind one out right here as they sealed off that line of scrimmage. They did. Nahas at right yeah. tackle had some help and look at him strip, try to strip the football. Five white shirts of Johnson all around Phillip and yeah. he held on to it. All right, yeah. first down Dowling at the 40 of Johnson. 9.30 left to go. Back uh, here's the, once again, handoff to Phillip. They just grind it between the uh, between the tackles right over center. And CJ gets down to about the 37-yard line gain of three. And it'll bring up second and seven. I'll tell you what, the Johnson defense been out there quite a bit tonight. And, uh, you know, waiting for the offense to kind of, you know, give them, you know, the offense some, some room. But they've been out there a lot. That could come into play, as you mentioned earlier, yeah. Mr. Mandering. I, I was thinking the same thing, Mark, is this is where conditioning comes into play. And then if there's one thing you know, this offensive line is well conditioned. Runs are, let the play clock run down. It's at 10 seconds now. And now here's a snap. Smolik, the give is to the uh, tailback. And again, that is C.J. Phillip turns a corner, puts his head down, and grinds it down to about the 30 two-yard line for a gain of five. The clock continues to run under eight minutes and 40 seconds here in the fourth quarter. That's one of the better runs I've seen C.J. Phillip do from a vision standpoint because he the play was going to the short side of the field, and he's got his blockers out in front of him, sees it's walled up, saw an alley back to his left side and snuck up in there and, and was able to squeeze out four or five yards to create a third and short. Aiden George, Drew Teagles, and Colin Mack, the front three for Johnson. J.T. Freeman, Colin Hodap, Josh Kerber, Jacob Yanni, Yanni and Jack Ciota are their linebackers. Back to throw is Smolik. Fires it out. The backdoor catch is caught at inside the 20-yard line. I guess who? C, or rather uh, Nicholson, Nicholson. Cooper Nicholson. And he threw it. At, his, at the back door off, yeah. off shoulder, and C.J. reached around and made the catch first down Dowling. I was kind of wondering if Dowling was going to go past there because Johnston sold out on the run, had no help over the top. They were man all the way across, and uh, Cooper Nicholson's able to create some space, and Smolik put it on him. So that goes for 15 yards on the reception. First down Dowling at the 17-yard line of Johnston. The Maroons will come out of the with two receivers right, one to the left. Maroons don't huddle as they haven't all year. Back to throw is Smolik, fires in the end zone. Touchdown, touchdown Dowling as they find Bo Gamble on a quick post route from the right side. And Matt, what happened defensively you know, for Johnson? Because Bo was wide open. He was, there was nobody over the top again. And uh, Johnson had come up and brought everybody up inside the box. They're manned up all the way across and uh, sent the linebackers up play and run but there was no safety help. There's, you know, usually you have a one high safety, you're gonna have one back there. You'd be man across and, and give yourself somebody, but there's nobody there. All right, the extra point by Marty Blount is up and good. And Dowling extends its lead to 35 to 19 over Johnston with 7.31 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Both teams with three timeouts left and we'll take a break. Dowling 35, Johnston 19 from Valley Stadium and Dowling's homecoming here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. 
Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Do you know what the best part about being a dog is? You can hear disaster before it even happens. You know what they say about disaster. Sometimes it can inspire a symphony. An honest day's work deserves an honest day's treat. No extra charge. And that is why we choose Honest Wrenches. No extra charge. And it's how service should be. Valley Stadium, a kickoff by Dowling Catholic. Here is a return by Johnston. And running with the football is Tatum Fox. He crossed the 25 and he's down right around the 27 or 8 yard line. That's where the Dragons will start first and 10. With 7.24 remaining here in the fourth quarter, Dowling has extended its lead to 35 19 on Bo Gamble's 17 yard touchdown reception from quarterback Jackson Smolik. And uh, that is the first touchdown pass for Smolik tonight. Let's go down to John Chido. Uh, Big answer for the Dowling offense that time, Johnny. Yeah, it sure was, and it, it was must need a drive there to, to get some breathing room because you can't let this Johnson team hang around like they have because they're gonna they're gonna take point they're gonna take shots and, and they've been successful with that. But uh, they had a good defensive stop last time, excellent drive, nice uh, pick route there uh, for the touchdown and uh, good execution all around. Yeah, it certainly was. We got a final score coming in as. Uh, Centennial has knocked off Urbandale 28-23. So congratulations, Ankeny Centennial. They moved their record to four and two. Urbandale drops to four and two. It's an eighth-ranked Centennial with the win at sixth-ranked Urbandale 28-22. The final there, uh, Mr. Maindring, as we're starting to go final. As that uh, first pass was incomplete for Johnson on their first down play from their own 27. Again, looking for Simpson over the middle, their big target. All right, Nuss fires the ball out, and the pass is caught. And a, a nice job by the Dowling defender that time. Tried yeah. to slap it away, but it was caught by the uh, Tatum Fox. They're doing a really good job. That was Braden Pearson right there. Was just riding right on the hip and just couldn't quite get enough of the football. Six-yard gain. Fox, a six-yard reception. Back to throw on third and four. He fires it downfield, and the pass is, I'm going to call it, caught. Yep. A nice pass by Nuss, and that'll be a first down catch. I believe that for is Sean, Sean Strand. Yeah, Sean Strand again. Who was very visible in your first half for Johnston. Yes. Moves the ball across the 40 to the 41. First down Johnson from their own 41. 640 left to go. Both teams with three timeouts each. Now it's back to throw. Angles it over the middle, and oh. it's incomplete. Tried to hit the big guy, Simpson, and Jacob couldn't catch up with it. Dowling safety came in late and <laughs> well defended by the, uh, the Maroons with uh, Braden Pearson back there. Justice Williams had his eye on that football. Yes, he, he was going to. He was closing on it and and uh, got knocked away by Simpson. Actually, in incidental contact and and uh, broke that play up. Stop the clock with 6:35 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Dowling leading 35-19. High scoring affair. Great football game. Both teams have went at it. Good defense. Special teams. A little bit of everything. Second and ten now with three receivers left. One to the right. Back to throws Nuss. Fires over the middle. The pass is caught. This time he hooks up with his tight end, Jacob Simpson. And he picks up the first down. He crosses over the 50 into Dowling territory at the Maroon 48. Looked like it was uh, Jimmy Wanick hanging on for dear life there as he crossed the middle. It was either that or it was uh, uh, Noah Seymour, I believe, is actually where he was. Gain of 11. And now back to throw is... Nuss and he tried to hit his big guy again the tight end Simpson running the fly route down the near sideline incomplete as he threw the ball out of bounds that'll stop the clock with 614 remaining the clock right now is Dowling's en enemy the runes leading 35 19 but the uh, Dragons in hurry up mode here they are and you know it's he's Nuss is kind of locked in on Simpson right now he's got a height advantage when he's out there against almost anybody and uh, you know he's but Jake Anderson has done a really good job of Closing him down. It's you know right now it's Jake Anderson on him again. Justice Williams over the top as the they played that cover two shell. 
All right, here's Ness back to throw. Now being chased, and that's a, that'll be a hold. Ness and loads the ball. It's incomplete. <laughs> and that's one way to stop the, a sack is yeah. to hold. Just tack. <laughs> so that penalty will be spotted yeah. about the 43-yard line. It'll be 10-yard penalty against Johnston. This one's going to hurt. That was second and 10. That'll bring up second and 20. Yeah, that was uh, or more or more. That, that was a uh, flag that was pretty easy to call from the side. Nice game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Skeffington's former wear. Also, thanks to Ashworth Vision Clinic and Construction Professionals. A reminder, Iowa Catholic Radio is starting their fall fundraiser. That begins this Monday, October 3rd, runs all next week. And uh, Iowa Catholic Radio is listener supported. Your tax deductible gift keeps Iowa Catholic Radio on the air, connecting listeners with Christ. Go to iowacatholicradio.com. You can donate from there. Back to throw Nuss, second and 29, back to the 33 yard line of Johnston. And, and you know, the, the penalty is such a, it's a big penalty because you do it from the spot of the foul. And uh, they yes. marked 10 yards from the spot of the foul, so it made it second and 29. Now it's third and 29 after the incompletion, and Johnson's got their backs against the wall. Last the play was incomplete, as you mentioned, so it's third down, 29 yards to go for Johnston. We approach the six-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Dowling trying to go 5-1, and one. setting up their meeting next week at Ames. Now they throw it over the middle, pass is incomplete. Tatum Fox is the intended receiver. And this Dragon offense now, which we said earlier, they're about a 60-70% team that likes to pass every down, or 60-70% of the time, and they'll run it about 20-30%. to 30%. Well, Rex Woodley has been out since the first half. We have not called his number and have not gotten a report. So that has made a big difference. That is their leading receiver, and they've been going to others. You know, they had the, they had the touchdown earlier tonight, uh, Matt, if you remember, by Tatum Fox. Yeah. He stepped up. All right, Johnson forced the punt, and they get it away. Will Saffers punts it deep and fielded by Dowling at the 33-yard line on a fair catch by the Maroons. So we're going to take a moment and congratulate uh, Lauren Frerichs, Queen, and Jack Williams King. Is that what how it came out? That's how it came out All today. Right. And uh, so Jack Williams is the king, and, and Lauren Ferrix is the queen this afternoon as uh, we crowned them at the pep rally and dance tomorrow night. And You're going to be there. I will be at my post. I, I think it's 30 <laughs> second homecoming dance. So. <laughs> hey, uh, John, what are you doing tomorrow night? Mr. Mainry, I think, is uh, looking for a out. chaperone, you know, to help him out. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got out. going? You, you mean to tag you out? Yeah. Yeah, that, something like that, yeah. Um, what are you and Kristen doing tomorrow night? Well, hopefully I'll be working on my 224 bowling high score, <laughs> lifetime high oh, score tomorrow night. This is Here gonna we get, go. This is going to get legs. Yeah. He goes bowling <laughs> before the game tonight. Because he's going to use, you know, his legs on the field and now on the sideline. Here's a handoff. Oh, C.J. He Phillips, he may go from the Dowling. It's a foot race. Dowling 32 down the far sideline, and he's tripped up. Touchdown saving tackle by Johnston. That young man's shaken up that made the tackle. But what a what touchdown a saving tackle that was. and a run by C.J. Phillips. Great run by C.J. Phillips as he hit the crease on the right side as we were mesmerized by Johnny's bowling. <laughs> and uh, That's he, right. he exploded through that right side line. Menson Martin made the touchdown saving tackle yeah. for Johnston. Yeah. Um, nice nice run, run. By, by CJ. It's it all the way down to Johnston. Spotted right at the 25 yard line. It really was a foot race. Actually, I think CJ got tackled. I don't think he got touched. Called a 42 yard yeah. run for CJ. Now they get uh, Rashad Davis in there, and he's hit and dropped as C.J. gets a breather. He's dropped about the 23, gained a two. And we got another final. It was uh, Ankeny defeating Valley 34-24, the final there. So Ankeny Hawks now 5-1, and one, third rank. They knock off Valley, which record falls to 3-3. Three and three. That was Ankeny's homecoming, televised on CISN, on the, the live stream up in Ankeny by uh, Paul Yeager Productions, as we like to call it. 35 <laughs> 19, Dowling with the lead, and now Maroons will oh. do the kneel down. No, I don't think. Or was it a bad exchange? Yeah, Looked like exchange. they were set up in an interesting formation. 
Yeah, they're under center there, Mark. That's they the were. first time uh, Jackson Smolik's been under center for, for, for a while here, I think, it's since week one. So. It's kind of crazy. To mishandled the snap, but the Maroons fall on top of the football. Johnny, with four minutes left, uh, the Maroons just trying to grind the clock out. That's their enemy right now. Yeah, it sure is. And, and they've had some success running the football, spreading Johnson out, especially uh, with the three receivers set one side with the attached tight end. And, and that base power back away from the, the trip side where it brings uh, guys out of the box has been really successful. All right, third and ten, Smolik will pass, fires downfield. He's got a man open right at the first down mark. That's Bo Gamble's got the first down, slips a tackle and gets inside the ten down to about the nine-yard line. What a move that time by Bo Gamble. He and Cooper Nicholson, the yards after the first down catch. Yeah, you know, it's... It's just fun to watch those two. They catch and they have a little hesitation as soon as they catch it, just automatically. It's great coach. You got, you know, if it's natural or not, and, and uh, he makes a little stutter step. First guy flies by him, and uh, he gets up inside the 10-yard line. Well, Phillip had the 42-yard run from first down that set up Dowling at the Johnson 25, then Gamble with a 16-yard reception. First and goal, Dowling at the 9-yard line of Johnson. Game clock continues to run under three minutes and uh, five seconds on the snap. And here is Smolik, fakes it handoff to Rashad Davis, rolls to his right, and Jackson is tripped up inside the five. And see where they angle him out of bounds, right about the two-yard line, gain of seven. I think that pass that was designed to be flipped to Hank Brown, or it was a Rashad Phillips yeah. running across, or Rashad Davis running across, I think it was Hank Brown, was in motion across the formation. Take a look at the was, replay. Yeah, Hank Brown. And, oh, there he is, uh, yep. I see? think it's supposed to designed to flip to him, but Jackson, it wasn't open. Jackson takes it himself, dives and dives to the two-yard line. All right, Dowling with the ball at the two-yard line. And second down and goal from there. In tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio, brought to you in part by Ashworth Vision Clinic, construction professionals, and, of course, the Red Zone, sponsored by Bozen the Floor. Say more with Bozen online at bozen.com, 515-244-ROSE. That's 244-7673. And now handoff, touchdown Rashad Davis. That is his second touchdown of the night. Or check that, his third touchdown of the night. And that's good news because Rashad sat out last week. He was injured in the city high game, lower leg and he goes in for the touchdown right over right guard and tackle. Great block up there by Hunter Crutchlow. He, he got to get up in there, and, and he sealed the outside, the contained guy, and allowed Davis to run up inside it for the touchdown. Extra point now by the Maroons. The kick is on its way, and it's up and good by Marty Blount, the sophomore kicker. Perfect on the night, 42-19 Dowling with 2.54 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Homecoming for the Maroons here at Valley Stadium in West Des Moines, along with Matt Mainry. I'm Mark Amadale, John Chido on the Dowling sidelines. We'll be back after these messages on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. I'm off to college. Oh, rats. Hi, Joe the Car Guy with a reminder. Before you send your kids off to school, set up an appointment with Westside Auto. We check everything from tires to belts, fluids, hoses, wipers, and lights. 44 inspection points to help prevent that oh, rats moment for your students. Call us today to set up your appointment. We'll have your kids off to school saying, For the best, head west. Westside Auto. Auto. with the squib kick after the kickoff. Maroons lead it 42-19. It was picked up by Jeff Scott. He was down right at the 28-yard line. That's where the Dragons will start first and 10, trailing 42-19 with 2.50 remaining. John Chido, I'm going down to you. We're talking about post-game interviews. Uh, TV tonight with uh, CISN. Your thoughts on maybe a couple players, offense or defense, you have in mind, Johnny? Yeah, I was just thinking about that through my head. Uh, defensively, uh, Jake Anderson had a, had, a, had a ball game when he had two interceptions and some big plays. It's one guy I could think of. Uh, 
You got Hanton down there Hanton. too. Yeah. yeah. I, I like Jake Anderson too. I think he made some nice, broke up some passes that could have gone. I mean, he did a really good job. And Noah Seamer. Uh, Seamer had a nice play in the back corner of the end zone. Rumley tips that ball early, or just in that last series as they were driving. Yeah. Offensive. You got choices. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of choices. Uh, a lot of nominees. I'm gonna have Coach Pollock help me with the offense. That's not the guy you want to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I knew it would get you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did. You know that. Back to throw is Nuss. Fires it out. Caught at around the. Uh, 39 yard line picks up the first down nice catch that time by the dragons they are not going to quit john strand who was their uh, go-to guy in the first half with the catch but tatum fox runs off after that play i saw that a little bit of a stinger i think so strand picks up 11. And it's first down johnson at their own 39 back to throw is nuts he fires over the middle and well escorted there was the uh, tailback Blake Tubbs running a little post route. It's incomplete at the Dowling 40. That will stop the clock with 2.18 remaining here in the fourth quarter. We missed not to mention the uh, the Johnson, new, the newest athletic director at Johnson, came from down the hall from you, Mr. Yeah. Mike O'Connor. I wonder if he, you think he got a parking spot here tonight reserved for him? Or? Yeah, they did. It was over there at City Hall. They, was it? they, they yeah. didn't, and no golf cart to usher him here. <laughs> did you get it? Did you text him about the the uh, the, the baby powder the baby over powder? there and their I'm bleachers? Not, I'm not touching that. Okay, I just just curious. I'm just bringing stuff out. I mean, yeah. if, if Johnny, remember that one game where Mr. Mainry had to leave uh, because some uh, baby baby powder was uh, in the Dowling stands and yeah, he got called out of the bullpen. For he did extra duty <laughs> that did. night. He was, he was working. Well, uh, we did a lot of, lot of overtime. Lot of yeah. Well, let's, let's be honest, Johnny. Uh, the two form, two Dowling or two former Dowling. Uh, coaches and administrators are now on the Johnston coaching staff and administration had to assist Mr. Mainring yeah. with the, Mr. O'Connor and Mr. Bossman at that yeah. night, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Mr. Bossman might have come down after the game. Oh, yeah, sorry. he was yeah. coaching. I'm sorry. There might have been a, <laughs> we had some kids helping us, some of them more famous than others, helping us more uh, famous. <laughs> uh, clean up things and the bleachers. All right, first to 10, Johnson on the pass completion. Nuss back to throw. Rolls to his right, looking, looking. Everybody's covered. He's hit it, and he throws it, and it's incomplete. Nuss hit, dropped, yeah, and hopefully he hit. can get right back up. As he he was, took a he lick that time. Hit as he let the ball loose. And, Getting and on top of that, that play was Ralston Rumley. Yeah, and uh, he, he got, Rumley got, I believe it was Rumley. Yeah, it was Ralston. He, um, as he was starting to let it go, he got a hit on him, and, and uh, is all right. It's all right, let's get, we're going to take a break, Matt. Excuse me. 42 19 is our score. Dowling with the lead over Johnson. 2.03 to go, and Will Ness, Will Ness rather, is down uh, the, the Johnson quarterback. We'll take a one minute break and come back along the Iowa Catholic Radio Network and CISN. We all love a good win, however small or ordinary. Losing track of time, finding yourself with a few extra dollars in your pocket, soaking up the perfect Iowa day. These are the everyday delights and small victories that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the moments that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the corn they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and it's going to be an interesting patio furniture season this year. We have ordered a ton of merchandise, but due to supply chain issues, it's coming in a truckload at a time all summer long. If you want the best patio furniture, check early and check often. If you want to custom order your furniture, get in here as soon as you can to give your furniture the best chance to arrive this summer. Fireplace Superstore, Iowa's best patio furniture selection, just east of I-35 on Douglas Avenue. back here at uh, Johnston and now the backup quarterback Adrian Broadus is hit and dropped inside the Johnston 45 yard line as Will Nuss got up under his own power thank goodness Johnston starting quarterback sophomore uh, walked off and over to the bench to be attended to by the training staff that was a big hit by uh, Dowling's Ralston Rumley that, that kept him on the ground Matt and I'm yeah. glad he's all right yeah it looked like he was all right ran off of his own power there and, and uh, Dylan Manning makes the sack on that last play there I believe that was couldn't tell if it was 98 uh, Peyton, or 99. Peyton Johnson. Peyton was Johnson. Peyton Johnson. Yep. 
Yes. On that last sack? Yes. Okay. So Johnson gets the sack. And it'll bring up third and 21 for Johnston. Adrian brought us a quarterback, six foot, 180 pound junior. He was a starting quarterback in week one when the Dragons lost at uh, Northern Iowa. And this time he uh, keeps the football and gets it up to the 47 yard line, a gain of five. It'll bring up fourth and long for Johnston. Final minute of the football game here at Valley Stadium. And that was Dylan Manning that time. So there, Dylan Manning. There you go. <laughs> so we're, now we're back to who we're going to interview, Mr. Uh, Chido, Mr. Uh, Bowl over 200, John Chido. I like uh, uh, Cooper Nicholson had a had a ball game too. Yeah, he office. did. We haven't had Cooper on, I don't believe, this year. All right. What's your uh, What's your defensive player then? We'll go with Cooper on the offense. Uh, Jake Anderson, I think. I think that's what. Yeah, I think got him. Yeah. What'd you bowl today, Johnny? What was that all about? Uh, uh, what? Two twenty-four. 24. Is that a record? That is a lifetime record. <laughs> Were there witnesses? There was a witness. And Your wife, uh, I, yeah. have, I have a photo. Okay. We did see a photo. Yeah, but we don't know if you took it from the lane next to you or not. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point, Mark. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, it probably never happened again. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what a homecoming has been for Dowling Catholic. Uh, I want to thank all the homecoming inductees matt i know you uh, you were there this afternoon and uh, usually i get away for that but i couldn't today uh, kind of run that down we had rico gafford on at halftime with carolyn kirk kirk off and uh, rico inducted into the dowling hall of fame go ahead kurt, kurt engler uh, an 88 graduate who was a state champion wrestler and uh, in 88 and uh, you know he had a great career at dowling and i know coach gray was there to see him get inducted and, of course, we mentioned, we mentioned Regal Gafford and Gradaville, you know, a girl I got to watch play golf and, and, uh, and really swim. had an outstanding career and swim. Mm -hmm. um, outstanding career at Dowling her, as well. Her dad's a pretty good dentist, I understand. Yeah. Back to throw is Broadus, and what's he do? Throws is incomplete. Now will stop the clock with 25 seconds to go, and that was fourth and 17, and Dowling will take over on downs, and the Maroons are going to move on. They're going to improve. Prove their record now to five and one on the season. Uh, the other inductees, Cole Decker, a, a 2012 graduate, cross country and track runner, uh, went on to Central College, became an All-American there, and, and had a great career. Um, Cole Decker and then Lizzie Stacken Delaney, 11 grad. Lizzie Stashen. Yeah, Stashen. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Delaney. We interviewed her a lot in, during basketball post yeah. games. Oh, yeah. Great kid. And uh, went on and was a four-year letter winner, had a great career, and went on had, with, with the AU and everything else. And, uh, uh, you know, she was career leader in blocks. And then the final one was Ryan Schweitzer. From the infamous Schweitzer family. They've had a few athletes, I think. Dante Cattaldo in the ball game at quarterback, and he keep, fakes the handoff, keeps it around right in, and that should do it as he's brought down forward progress to the 47-yard line. No gain in the play. And that'll do it. Dowling with the win tonight, 42-19 over Johnston. And it was close. Halftime, the Maroons led 21-17. And uh, Johnston was hanging around most of the night. And uh, the Maroons win it by the score of 42-19. Congratulations to head coach Tom Wilson and Dowling Catholic. They improved their record to 5-1. They're ranked second in Class 5A. Johnston falls to 3-3. Three and three. Dragons coming up next, uh, Matt. They have a Thursday night road trip to Sioux Thursday. City, oh. and uh, they'll be traveling up there. Football, to Sioux City North. Football of, field issues. Huh? Yeah, they'll be up to the Sioux City. Yeah, well, both Sioux City teams are home next week, so sure. that'll be a Thursday night game, October sixth. Johnson at as they travel to Sioux City North to take on the Stars. So I see a lot of a lot of hugs there on the coaching staff oh, absolutely. as Coach Bossom comes through, and uh, you know, what a great guy. Let's get a couple of scores in before we go to break. Uh, Sioux City North defeated, or Waukee rather, defeated Sioux City North 24-14 at Waukee tonight. That game was on CISN. Other finals has uh, Waukee Northwest defeating Sioux City East 17-7, so... Waukee Northwest now at 500. They are three and three on the season, and Sioux City East drops to four and two. Other finals had Ankeny Centennial knocking off number six uh, Urbandale 28-22, a final from Ferricks Field at Urbandale, and the other final has uh, number three Ankeny Downing Valley 34-24.
Ankeny improves to five and one. Valley falls to three and three. And here it was Dowling Catholic, 42 to 19. A final, a winner over Johnson. Let's take a look at some of the numbers. Thanks to Jared Seifert. We didn't get him at halftime because we had all that stuff going on. So we a lot of we'll go cooking. through it now. And uh, these will these will look real good. Dowling with 424 yards of total offense tonight. Johnson with 325. The Maroons had 235 of their 424 yards in the air, 189 on the ground. For Johnson, 264 yards passing by Will Nuss and company, 61 yards rushing for the uh, Dragons. Uh, the Maroons were penalized seven times for 67 yards. Johnson, five penalties for 51 yards. First downs, Dowling with 22, Johnson with 17. Jackson Smolik went 21 of 29 passing. 235 yards, one or one interception, and two touchdowns tonight. Will Nuss, 14 to 37 passing with 276 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. For Dowling, C.J. Phillip was a leading ball carrier, 13 carries, 107 yards, and a touchdown. Rashad Davis, 16 carries, 70 yards, and three touchdowns. Smolik, three carries for 11 yards. And for Johnston, Blake Tubbs, 14 carries, 52 yards. Adrian Broadus. Two carries for 11 yards. Leading receiver for Dowling tonight was Cooper Nicholson. He'll be one of our guests. We're trying to line up here in the postgame show. Seven catches for 99 yards and a touchdown for Cooper. Bo Gamble, five catches for 72 yards and a touchdown. Jalen Thompson, two catches for 42 yards tonight. Michael Reichardt, two catches for 14 yards. And C.J. Phillip, two catches for nine yards to lead Dowling. For Johnston, Tatum Fox, six catches for 107 yards and a touchdown. Sean Strand, Four catches for 61 yards and a touchdown. Rex Woodley, one catch for 50 yards. And Jacob Simpson, two catches for 29 yards to lead the Dragons. Once again, the final, Dowling 42, Johnston 19. The Maroons with 424 yards of total offense. And Johnston with 325. And our thanks to the real math teacher up here that knows numbers, Jared Seifert, on that. So we'll take a break. We'll take a two-minute break. We'll notify the Iowa Catholic Radio Network and CISN. Two-minute break, and we'll go to the postgame show on the field with John Chida. When we return, that final score, Dowling 42, Johnson 19, here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and it's going to be an interesting patio furniture season this year. We have ordered a ton of merchandise, but due to supply chain issues, it's coming in a truckload at a time all summer long. If you want the best patio furniture, check early and check often. If you want to custom order your furniture, get in here as soon as you can to give your furniture the best chance to arrive this summer. Fireplace Superstore, Iowa's best patio furniture selection, just east of I-35 on Douglas Avenue. Not all used vehicles are created equal. DRMAN certified used vehicles have a big advantage. What sets us apart is that all used vehicles receive a 175 point inspection. Carfax report, two oil changes, collision deductible coverage, and wheel dent and windshield repair. Also, all DRMAN certified come with two warranties. A one year, 12,000 mile bumper to bumper, and a two year, 100,000 mile powertrain. DRMAN Ford Indianola, DRMAN Automotive Knoxville, DRMANauto.com. Do you know what the best part about being a dog is? You can hear disaster before it even happens. You know what they say about disaster. Sometimes it can inspire a symphony. An honest day's work deserves an honest day's treat. No extra charge. And that is why we choose honest wrenches. No extra charge. And it's how service should back here at uh, Valley Stadium on Dowling's homecoming and it was successful homecoming and athletic hall of fame inductions going on Dowling 42 Johnson 19 the final Mark Amadell along with Matt Mandry 
as uh, we'll go down on the field here with uh, John Chido and Johnny's got a couple of uh, Dowling players that we're going to start off with Johnny and uh, Jake Anderson who had a very nice night defensively Johnny take it away with the Dowling senior uh, Jake Anderson Jake congratulations on tonight's win as a hard fought game and we talked about pregame that was going to be tough through especially for those first three quarters and then one of the teams were going to prevail and it, and it was you guys fortunately but Talk about some of the halftime adjustments. It seemed like they were attacking you in the middle of the field defensively and uh, some of the things you guys did to, to attack, attack that, what they were doing in the first half. Yeah, we faced up a little adversary, adversary to start, and then we just changed up our corners, You know, went, up, went man sometimes, just changed our looks on them, and then safety's over the top. And I mean, it stopped them pretty easily. And you had a nice uh, interception there uh, in the end zone there, and uh, you know, it seems like things changed so quick. It went from... Seven nothing, I think it was, and then then the, then the safety, and then they they got the touchdown, and then I think he almost had the, the second interception, and it seems that you were all over the field tonight, and uh, you know Stubbs, I think it was, uh, you manned up on him a lot and, and did a, not, a lot of nice things. Yeah, so on the pick, yeah, the quarterback just threw it behind him, I I jumped it, and then yeah, on the other defensive play, just staying with him, and then just right with him the whole way, and then just knocked it down. Well, Jay, congratulations. Uh, nice game tonight. Thank you. All right, that's John Chida with uh, Dowling Sr. Uh, Jake Anderson starts at uh, left cornerback and had a nice night. Interception, Matt. Great night. And more about breaking up. He broke up a lot of passes. He had some PBUs tonight. And, you know, it was a lot of uh, a lot of great plays by him. Yes, yeah, certainly was. Okay, let's go back down the field. Uh, John Chido with, uh, well, a young man who, Jack of all trades, he, a master of yeah, them all, right? I know it, and he's just about as fast as Johnny. <laughs> well, he doesn't bowl like Johnny does. We'll let him talk yeah, it. We'll, we'll let him sort it out. Johnny, take it over. He has some speed, let me tell yeah. you, and he's got some quickness too. Yes, he and does. You, you had a lot of nice catches and a lot of yards after the catch uh, with some moves there, and kind of walk us through that last touchdown play. It was. It seemed like it was an out with with, with the post over the top, and and talk about the, the coverage if, I, if I'm right. Yeah, the quarterback or the middle linebacker kind of just came down on me. I knew I had a wide open. If Jackson could just put on the money, you know, I just had to catch it and, you know, caught it, touchdown. And you did a lot of nice things. Uh, with They seemed like they pressed coverage you a lot and then did, did some different looks, but it went man sometimes, and it seems like you guys got in different formations to kind of expose that and let you get free. Uh, talk about a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, we motioned early in the game. That helped a lot. Uh, it's just, you know, when you have a great quarterback like Jackson, he's going to find find the perfect receiver to throw to, and I was open. So, you know, he hit me and just happened to catch it. So, yeah. Well, Cooper, congratulations. Nice job tonight, and uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. All right, that's John Chido with uh, Cooper Nicholson, who uh, caught the first touchdown pass tonight, uh, Matt, uh, from Jackson Smolik, a seven yards, capping off a 10-play, 65-yard drive, and gave Dowling a 7 nothing lead. And now... What, they got the head coach in there? Well, I was thinking we were going to get a shot at OC there, but no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go down back down to John Chido. He has the head coach of Dowling Catholic, Tom Wilson. Johnny? Coach, congratulations on the hard-fought game there. And then we, we thought it was going to be close all the way through the third quarter, and then one of the teams were going to prevail and open it up, and you guys were the ones that, that took advantage of it, uh, both through the air and, and running the football. Oh, we did. You know, sputtering there for two drives, I think, early in the second half was a little bit frustrating. Uh, sometimes we – outsmart ourselves and I and, uh, think we need to make all these adjustments and finally I, I just said let's do what we're good at and uh, then we kind of kept our foot on the gas uh, you know the, the touchdown pass to, to Bo on first down I mean that just to stay after it instead of trying to milk the clock so I was proud of them to, to put those in. Yeah and defensively uh, they, they did a lot of nice things attack in the middle of the field and a lot of good adjustments there and, and seemed like you did different looks in the secondary and, and kind of shut down that passing game. Yeah, they did. They did a nice job. And, and I think Nuss is a, a nice quarterback, and he has some weapons of which to work with. And, um, you know, we're certainly experimenting with some of the coverages that we think that we need. And, and uh, you know, the one long touchdown of theirs, honestly, that's a blown assignment by us, and that's what's frustrating. We have to eliminate those. Well, Coach, congratulations. A great win this part of the season, and uh, good luck moving forward. All right, thank you. All right, John Chido with uh, head coach Tom Wilson. I want to thank Johnny for those post-game interviews from the field following Dowling's homecoming game with uh, Johnston and Athletic Hall of Fame night here at Valley Stadium. Dowling with the win, 42-19. And, uh, Mr. Manion, we're going to take uh, one final break. 
Anything you want to interject before we go to break? Uh, what yeah. a game it was by the Maroons, back and forth, and uh, Johnson had it down to a, what a, a, a two-point game at one point, I believe. They did, and, you know, we, we talked about the, the first half and the second half. Both started the same. Both defenses, both offenses not quite clicking, and mm -hmm. then, you know, Dowling had a couple uh, penalties there that extended some Johnston drives, and Johnson took advantage of them. I, I was impressed with Nuss and, and what Johnson can do offensively. This Dowling offense really hit a stride tonight. I mean, they didn't have too many drives that they left something on the right. field. And uh, they are really getting into a groove and will make them a hard out um, from here on out. All right, let's, uh, let's sign off with uh, CISN first of all. We'll stay on radio, but I uh, want to thank everybody from CISN. They do a great job, including the, uh, the TV guys over the cameraman, uh, Lucius Pham and A.J. Laporte, and our I, uh, CISN producer, Randy Nielsen. Thanks for all you guys do. And, uh, of course, they had three other games going on tonight across the, the Metro, Sioux City North at Waukee. You saw that game on CISN along with Johnson Dowling and Valley at Ankeny. So those were all their games. And so we'll say so long to CISN. I know they got to do all their teardown, but appreciate all their work, and they'll be on the air next year. So uh, good night for the folks at CISN. And now continuing our coverage here on Iowa Catholic Radio, uh, Matt, we have a few more things going on. You mentioned the homecoming court. We talked about the, uh, the Hall of Fame.